Welcome to Why Blank Lost for the first episode of Survivor 46. I'm David Bloomberg, and joining me as always is my co-host, who will never quit on a task or in the middle of a podcast or anything, <laughs> Jessica. Oh, are, are we going right to it? Because <laughs> yes. let me tell you, I am not a quitter for sure. And I think there's going to be a lot of discussion centered around potential quitting to yeah. this podcast. Yeah, no risk about that. <laughs> Uh, I'm just, I'm guessing. I'm yeah, assuming guessing. that we're going to go down that path. Yeah. Yes. And, and we also have a special returning guest with us to follow that path. Uh, she would always, wait, never give up. <laughs> I was going to say always never quit. And so I just blew that whole thing. But uh, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep going. Even though I messed up the introduction, I'm going to keep going. Welcome back. Lindsay Carmine from Survivor 43. Yay. Well, thank you for having me. I feel like quitting seems to be a theme of our podcast these days. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you guys know my feelings about quitting from yes. our podcast from last season. So uh, I thought it was very appropriate for you guys to invite me to come back on today. So thank you. <laughs> yes. We, we are not intending to make you our quitting expert. Okay. It's, so. Look. It's fine. It's fine. Any reason for you guys to let me come and chat with you guys is a okay with me. So thanks oh, for good. having me today. Yeah. We're really uh, excited to have you back. This is yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so for anyone who may be new to the podcast, uh, each week we compare the game of the person voted out or who left for whatever reason, uh, as has happened before, but not this time, thankfully. Uh, uh, to my several rules for winning that I originally wrote way back after season one and have been updating ever since. You guys didn't even get the several reference. Um, <laughs> oh, you mean like oh. seven? <laughs> yeah. Like seven rules? I have several rules and two appendices, <laughs> yes. That was good. That, um, you just snuck that one right in there. I, love I snuck that. it in so well I had to explain the joke, which is never a good thing. <laughs> well, um, you know, but it does make sense because he had to explain that several means seven. Yeah. Yes, and everyone who scratched their head. So it works, yes, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and we will use all the non-spoiler information available to us from what we saw on TV, interviews, social media, and secret scenes. The newest version of the rules can be found on the website by going to our dedicated page at robhaswebsite.com slash yxlostfeed and clicking on the link bubble for Survivor Rules. Mm -hmm. uh, so before we get started, Lindsay, what's new? Um, let's see what is new. Um, I'm doing a little F45 challenge. So I've been spending a lot of time just focusing on like working out nutrition. Um, we are getting ready to head to Vermont in a couple weeks for a ski trip. And then we're going to Paris for spring break. So I'm kind of getting ready for a bunch of travel. And then, um, I, uh, got promoted, I guess you could say, to like uh, the head of the health center for the camp that I work out every summer. So right, right now I'm Aww. just kind of trying to like learn my new role and uh, talking to some of the new nurses and um, the staff that'll be working with me this summer. So I'm just kind of gearing up for that. It's fun. Yeah. That cool. sounds incredible. So, yeah. so it sounds like you'll be near me. You're, you're coming to Paris, Illinois for spring break. That's great. <laughs> It is. It is. Yeah. We've been, uh, it's been on our bucket list for a long time. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, we're excited. And then, um, I've just been like this week, I went to, uh, the Bryson Wendell, uh, watch party premiere in New York city. And that was amazing. Uh, Johnny Fairplay was there and jam jam and Sari and Eliza. So, um, you know, a lot of the big players were there and then I got to see a lot of my season 43 cast. Um, so it's, it's always a great time. I love it. Yeah, Johnny Fairplay awesome. recently blocked me on Twitter because I like. <laughs> I think he does Owen. that a lot. Well, I liked yeah. one of Owen's tweets when Owen was pointing out some of uh, Johnny's uh, hypocrisy. Yes. And all I did, I did not contribute to the conversation. <laughs> I just liked Owen's tweet. And all of a sudden, I was blocked by Johnny Fairplay. I'm like, okay, Mr. Sensitive. Uh, yeah, sensitive, that, I guess. That was a topic of conversation at the event on yeah. Wednesday. So uh, I just kind of sat back and listened yeah. and uh, didn't you insert my blocked. opinion too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I try to be a peacemaker, but it doesn't always work out that yeah. way. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough role to play, but yes. someone's mm -hmm. got to do it. Right. 
So uh, before we get to our discussion of the rules, we always have some other things to discuss from the week's episode. And obviously there was a lot going on in a mm. two hour premiere. Uh, mm. Plus a lot we didn't see, according to both Mike Bloom and Dalton Ross. And, you know, thanks to both of them for getting us all that behind the scenes information from, mm -hmm. from Fiji. Uh, but the first thing that I think we have to mention, Tiffany in her pregame interviews, made fun of and yelled at people who told others about their idols or advantages. And Jessica and I were like, yes, you know, we both had in our notes. Yes, yeah. good job, Tiffany. Da, da, da. And we loved it. And what happens on the first episode? She finds a beware advantage and immediately tells someone else. Yes. Mm -hmm. I actually referred to her in my notes initially as the yeah. shut the F up girl, because yeah. that's what she was like. That was one mm -hmm. of the most beautiful lines I've heard spoken in the pregame press. And I was like, thank goodness someone is actually expressing this view. And then wah, wah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she did have some hesitation about telling Q when Kenzie brought it up. But mm -hmm. she immediately told Kenzie, so I know right off the bat. Mm -hmm. so, uh, that was but this, you know what funny. though, this brings up a really interesting point, and I'm sure Lindsay that you can speak to this as well. Mm -hmm. When you go out to play this game, you have all of these notions and ideas and thoughts in mm -hmm. your head about how things are going to go and what you're going to do in circum in certain situations. And I think it's interesting, like Mike Bloom asked everyone, like, what do you do when the boat shows up mm -hmm. and, and someone mm -hmm. has to get on the boat and everyone had to answer that question. But then it never usually goes to plan. It never goes the way that you actually think it's going to go because all of a sudden now you're in it and mm -hmm. you have to make a decision. And it's, it's, it's real. It's not like in your brain because in your brain, you're playing a perfect game. You're like, Oh yeah, of course, this is how I'm going to handle that. And this is what I'm going to do. And then you get there and you're like, Oh snap, this is not working the way yeah. that I want. And you're reacting differently. And so, yeah, sometimes those, those ideas and plans that you have going into the game fall away quickly when you're actually playing the game. Yeah, and I think it's a common theme that we see in every single season. My my question was was like, was it that much of a beware advantage if you know she finds it, she's not going to get a clue to uh, the hidden immunity idol or or be able to get into the box? I guess the key mm -hmm. until they lost an immunity challenge, but she had enough time after they lost the immunity challenge to be able to get that key before she goes to tribal council. So I didn't think she was backed into a corner that much that it justified her saying like, I have to tell Q. Like I get that yeah. she told right. Kinsey because Kinsey was right there, which another thing I can't understand were, was everyone just saying like, we're just looking for idols. It doesn't matter. Like it's That's just a it free for all. Like. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. like, that's, that's a little aggressive, like the first three days of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and to each their own, like each tribe's going to do something different. But I noticed when everybody was looking for idols this episode, it seemed like it was kind of like a, a group thing. You know, I, you. Yeah. I don't think so. We'll we'll talk about uh, okay. Jalinski, uh, you know, in that regard. And mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think it was they were doing it pseudo secretly. You know, mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm going to get some wood. You know, when <laughs> everyone knew what they meant, yeah. but still, they weren't quite outwardly saying mm -hmm. what they were doing. It, that that's what it seemed like to me. Um, but it also, when they would stumble yeah. upon each other, it was just like, right. "Hey, I'm looking for idols." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, at that point, you might as well admit it. But... Yeah, you're like, "Oh, shucks, you yeah. you busted me." <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I I I. I do agree it wasn't as much of a beware advantage as, you know, the, the losing mm -hmm. the vote, which, of course, you know, we don't like it when people lose their votes. So right. that's fine. Right. Uh, from what Mike Bloom said, he was pretty impressed at how quickly Tiffany got everything solved. So yeah. I don't know that production realized someone. I mean, let's face it. The guys on the other tribe couldn't do the savvy task, which was a simple like third grade word search mm -hmm. uh so if you have two people working together who can't do a word search it seems unlikely that someone can break a code in an afternoon also right you're gonna have people on like you know it'll be a bell curve and you'll have people on either end and i think mm -hmm. tiffany was on you know the smart end of being able to break that code so quickly mm -hmm. 
And if yeah. someone else had gotten it, I, I think they'd they'd have been out of luck. I just want to know: Do they let her keep the pencil? Yeah, <laughs> because I, I just, I'm so curious. <laughs> No, because yes, be Boston Rob said on Island of the Idols that you, <laughs> you never <don't. laughs> find a pencil on Survivor. This is why I want, like, I want to know, did she get to keep uh, the yes. pencil? Yeah. Um, um, I My question is, is like, and I don't know if this is just uh, my own personal, like, opinion, but when we were on the island, everyone kind of had um tabs on everyone else they knew where everyone was and i'm wondering how she got that much time to just sit back and be able to work yeah. through that puzzle like was mm -hmm. kenzie helping her and like kind of redirecting people so they wouldn't see that she was working on that puzzle or i mean because that that must have taken her a good chunk of time like how did she yeah. justify being away from camp for that long a period of time well it seemed like other people were wandering around because at least one time if not a couple times she had to like she heard people coming she got up ran mm -hmm. somewhere else and mm -hmm. then restarted so she was like bouncing around you know uh solving what she could and then running to the next spot so that she wouldn't yeah. get caught uh so which it adds to the impressiveness of 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 the feat um so you know i think other people were just doing their thing and mm -hmm. a couple people were probably lying in the shelter uh and so you know um yeah i think that that all added up yeah now yeah. i i do want to say you know, Tiffany had to wait to get that key. But people who have been watching Australian Survivor know if this had happened there, she could have just smashed the box open to get inside. To heck with the key. They don't have rules there. It says you need a key to get in. Who cares? Rip it apart and you're fine. Is it just a free for all? Well, apparently, because that happened on, uh, you know, a few weeks ago on Australian Survivor, mm -hmm. a guy was supposed to, someone on one tribe had a key that they were supposed to give to someone on the other tribe. Mm -hmm. And the guy on the other tribe, he found this box. It was buried in the, you know, in the dirt. And he was tired of waiting. So when he worried that someone else might find it, he went over there, realized that from being buried in, you know, kind of wet dirt, the the wood had, it was not great anymore. He just uh. ripped open the door to it. And I was like, can you do that? And the Australians are like, yeah, it's Australian survivor. They'll, you know. I think that's the uh -huh. way it should be, honestly. Like, I feel like, mm -hmm. like the, I know where I'm going back a little bit, like, but the bird cage, bird cage just break yeah. it. Come on. Right. I mean, like, what, what are they going to do? And well, I, there are things in survivor that come with rules, like mm -hmm. what you kind of can't do. But I also know that it, frustrates production when you don't actually do something with the item that you have. Mm -hmm. So maybe it would make things more interesting and more exciting if it was kind of like a free for all, like, well, you found it, do with it what you may. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm, and actually I, I had at the time made a TikTok comparing the bird cage to yeah. uh, the bot, you know, ripping open the box. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, in the U S they can't bend it. They're not allowed to bend a couple of wires at a bird cage, but in Australia, rip apart the box, you know, I like that. I like that way. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Well, so. maybe like Jelinski breaking the hourglass is kind of like foreshadowing that there might Ooh. be some breaking happening later on in the season. I don't know. Or maybe he's just like, He's starting this pattern of behavior like, OK, there weren't any consequences for him breaking the hourglass. Let's see how far we can push it. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Or were there consequences? You know, I mean, we Fair. haven't gotten to why he lost yet. Right. Uh, he he did say on an interview that the person who had to clean that up was not happy with him. Uh, so. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And think about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some production assistant has to go over there and clean all the glass mm -hmm. up, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, not good. Not good. Okay, uh, so note to future Survivor players. If you're going yeah. to break glass, just don't do it in the sand. Okay. Right. Yes, do it mm -hmm. with a hammer. No, no, don't do that either. No, don't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> no more uh, hourglasses. Yeah. Now, we'll obviously be discussing Jelinski uh, in a lot more depth in a few minutes. But one thing outside the rules that came up for both him and Jess was that they were supposedly under consideration because they did the puzzles on the challenges they lost. Now, mm -hmm. there were plenty of other reasons for both of them to be under consideration, mm -hmm. but it did not make any sense to blame the puzzlers. They were already behind at that point. Even Jeff said they took forever to get their gecko up here. <laughs> which is a weird 
sentence to say out of context, yeah. by the way. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they don't always blame the puzzlers. You know, they can't catch up for everybody. Uh, right. But, but, you know, I did think it was pretty funny that uh, I said this on Twitter. It came down to a battle of Survivor, David versus Jessica. I know. Um, it was kind of crazy, right? I was like, look at this. Mm, foreshadowing, maybe yes. a little bit. But, <laughs> I, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I still had my logo from that I had made uh, years ago of David versus Jeff Jessica. So. <laughs> it's good stuff. I'm going to need to see that. Yes. Oh, it's on Twitter. It's on Twitter. I, 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 I was going to find a way to put it on here, and then I kind of forgot. So Okay. Uh, I'll go uh, look for it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now, I know that there is obviously or was a lot going on everywhere in this episode, um, but in some ways it was so much I can't point to other specific things I want to highlight other mm -hmm. than, of course, what I'll be putting in TikToks at, at David Bloomberg TV. Is there mm -hmm. anything else that either of you wanted to discuss before we move on? I have one very quick thing, and I'm just jealous mm -hmm. of the music. The fact that like they're singing songs and making reference mm -hmm. to songs, we got yelled at all the time when we tried to sing anything and we weren't allowed to sing because it costs money, I guess. I don't even know, <laughs> but I guess mean, camp songs are okay. You mean, you mean the Andy Griffith tune, you know? I, well, like, like the, the players actually, there was one song, I think, I, I feel like it was, was it Ben that referenced like a song and then there was, there was a lot of singing most of it was camp songs, but I was just yeah. like, I was watching this going, every time we wanted to sing, they would stop recording us <laughs> because mm -hmm. they were so afraid that they were going to like, I don't know, violate some copyright. copyright. Yeah. You know? Copyright. I, I, so I'm wondering, I, go ahead. I was just going to say, I don't think camp songs have copyright. Although no, but I personally camp have songs never, though. I have that never was heard, the thing. I have never heard the camp song, Big Booty. Uh, so Lindsay, uh, maybe you would be the expert on that. Uh, That's so fair. Maybe know. you would know camp songs, Lindsay. <laughs> well, it, it, my husband and I were watching the episode last night, um, just cause at the watch party, I can't right. really watch. Um, right. it's yeah. really difficult. So we were catching up and I looked at Andy and I was like, I know that like, I am like, I am the queen of camp and campfire songs. And I have a blast when I'm there, but I think the singing would like really annoy me when I'm sitting there at camp uh, <laughs> on the island. And, you know, Andy was like, Lindsay, you love camp songs. And I'm like, I know, but I think like if I'm just sitting there and everybody's singing, like, I don't know, it would just irritate me. I mean, I wouldn't say anything. Um, right. My facial expressions would kind of be flat, but it would get annoying like really quickly. So, I mean, would you guys be annoyed by it or would you guys? Uh, it depends how long it went on, but I Agreed. would be annoyed by mm -hmm. like, Hunter, wasn't it? Hunter was trying Hunter to do was something, frustrated. and they're yeah. like, "Go, Hunter, go!" Or here we go, yeah. Hunter. Here yes, we go. <laughs> whatever it was, it was like being at a basketball game or something. It's like that's fine there, but no. If I'm just you know trying to break bamboo or make a fire or something, I don't need that kind of encouragement. You're going to yeah. Yeah. like just. Make like, me crazy. at some point, it's just going to get to be too much. Yeah. It's like the guy yeah. from SNL, the copy guy, making yeah. copies. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know? <laughs> like, it's, like, at some point, you're like, okay, it's enough. We get it. Yeah. We get the yeah. point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but to kind of like feed off of that and just uh, like what our first impressions were, um, during pregame, I kind of had my favorites and then I had a list of people that I was like, these people are going to get annoying real quick. Um, <laughs> And just to be nice, like I'm not gonna name names, but in saying that, me watching the first episode, those were the people that I love the most and I can't wait Good. to see more of. And, um, you know, Jelinski said something about when you're playing the game, um, what did he say? Um, he's basically talking about how you, like, you have to play in the now and that um, everything's a variable in the sense that like you don't know who you're going to be out there playing with. Um, and some people could look at other people's behavior and it rubs them the wrong way, but then you're put with a completely different group of people and they love it. And it seems like these people were all put on tribes where everyone just really seems to love everyone mm -hmm. else's energy and something mm -hmm. that can be mm -hmm. annoying to one person doesn't seem to be, you know, annoying these people that are on these tribes together. So, right, right. Um, yeah, no, no, no Bruce Katura situations this season. Exactly. And, and right. I honestly yeah. thought that we would be seeing that by now and we're not. So, yeah. um, 
So yeah, I'm really, I'm really enjoying. That's the, why there's the so many camp songs because they're all mm -hmm. very kumbaya. Yeah, except they're, yeah. Th that's driving Hunter crazy. So yes. you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, but we're getting he's there. With, he's good with Andy Griffith and Tevin. So mm -hmm. I do notice, love that. I yeah. and I, I, I should reference too. I love the fact that we have three alliances currently that are named after either movies or television shows, mm -hmm. like right mm -hmm. off the rip. I was like, this is amazing that this yeah. is happening so quickly across various tribes i just thought that was quite fun and i do love that the production is leaning in on that a little bit so that was that was enjoyable mm -hmm. so thanks for that little moment yeah i guess that uh, you know jeff said that it was affordable for them to uh, uh use the andy griffith tune uh but i guess they it must not have been affordable for them to get the charlie's angels uh, i know right that would have been great so again listen well, to my tiktok for that i put in the charlie's angels theme there so good I heard Rob and Steven talking about um, how the Andy Griffith is on the, uh, uh, what is it? Paramount Me, Mountain? Me TV. Well, yeah, I know. So is, is the Andy Griffith show on Paramount Plus? I don't know. I heard that too. And then I forgot okay. to check. Uh, okay. Because I've never seen it. I've, it's, it, I, I can't imagine it is because... Mm -hmm. It's on like someone said it was on me TV and uh, there was a time when um, I had a family who was going to a lot of doctor visits at the same time. Mm -hmm. And every time we would go in there, uh, they would go off with the doctor and I would be in the waiting room and every single time Andy Griffith was on. So <laughs> I watched like, I don't know, six, eight, ten episodes of Andy Griffith within the past few mm -hmm. years, you know, and and I thought. You know, this is actually a fun show. I should watch more of it. <laughs> and then I never did. But it was, it was a and I mean it's it's fun, but it's also just ridiculous in how different everything is compared yeah. to now. Oh, you know, yeah. just wholesome, just yeah, yeah. Well, not just that, but the attitudes towards women oh, yeah. and men oh, even, yes. and men and women together and mm -hmm. you know towards kids, everything. So but yes, it is very wholesome, uh certainly. Yes. And and it's funny. I, so I'm from the South and so like we grew up with the Andy Griffiths show. Um I was just really embarrassed by like how many people have never heard of the show before? Mm. Uh, yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm aging myself here. And or, yeah, and <laughs> Northerners. Damn Northerners. Yeah, that um, is true. That is true. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, and then, you know, like I said, Charlie's Angels, they they didn't do anything. I, come on, you couldn't get the three women to pose with, mm -hmm. with Charlie in the background? Um, come on. And then it we had Dumb coming. and Dumber, so yeah, we it had over so many. Well, that's true. That's oh, true. I didn't hear the Dumb and Dumber one. I yes. I heard the the Shaggy and Daphne, the right. the Andy yep. Griffith Alliance, and then the Charlie's Angels. Did I miss one? Dumb and Dumber was the was Ben and um, uh, Charlie when they were they couldn't solve the, the right word puzzle. I love them. Those are the Dumb and Dumber Alliance. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, love them so much. I mean, I, I, I like them, but aptly named, given that they yeah. of the word puzzle, yes. Yeah, so there's so many references to television shows and movies, so that yeah. was fun. Mm -hmm. All right, well, last season, we had a uh, one of our regular segments, Jeff Probst is Wrong About Blank, almost every week. But we're starting the season without one, because he was right about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I'm going to quote him later in the rules, because as I was trying to, you know, come up with a way to describe something. I was like, well, Jeff actually did an excellent job of describing it. Oh, so look at that. Him. So let's hope that continues through the whole season. <laughs> and in honor of Jeff being right, Lindsay is wearing a special shirt. I am. I am. And I, I've got to show it off. And it's because I'm like the biggest Taylor Swift fan. And um, my good friend Tegwith decided to uh, design a shirt that kind of plays off of the Eras Tour shirt. And immediately when I saw that she had created them, I went ahead and ordered them. So if anybody wants to reach out to me, I can send you the link. This shirt is perfect. It's like all different Jeff eras. We got young Jeff eras. We got the cowboy hat, Jeff. It's perfect. I know the I might cowboy have to order hat. Another one. Is there is there a sunglass Jeff on there though? Because that was a thing too for a bit. Mm. I forgot about sunglasses, Jeff. I, no, I, but I miss the days when they used to be able to wear sunglasses on Survivor. It was very very old school, but like. 
they definitely wore sunglasses for a bit. We but have pizza that. naked Jeff on here. Donna oh, Donna. Oh, so oh, that makes no. up for it. Oh, okay. Yes. That's that's a good yes. little bonus right there. <laughs> and about, let me oh. just <laughs> Real quick, let me just say this before I forget about Naked Pizza Jeff. Whenever I started getting nervous uh, leading up to playing the game, I'd always remember Naked Jeff with the pizza. And I'm Stop like, it. I'm just talking to Naked Jeff with the pizza. Like, it's not Jeff Probst from Survivor. Like, this is the person I'm talking to. So instead of imagining me or the, um, what do they say? Like whenever you're in, uh, speaking to a big group of people, just yeah, imagine yeah. like the crowd being naked. Yeah. I would just, in a not weird way, imagine Jeff being naked with a pizza and I'd kind of chill out a little bit. I, yeah. I don't That's know amazing. that you could say that sentence in a not weird way. I know, I know. It came out wrong. I'm sorry, listeners. Yeah. But was it pizza yeah. or bacon? No, it was pizza. It was pizza? Me and yeah, yeah. Was I, I, just, man I, was, I was distracted by the nakedness. Okay, yeah, I you know. can't I make food, bacon right? topless. I mean, you would be in so much pain. <laughs> yeah, I, no, but know. like it was like the I I anyway, yeah. I was distracted yeah. by the rest of it. So I'll take <laughs> listen, naked Jeff with pizza or bacon, either one. Okay. I'll take either it. one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I want to. Uh, Change topic a little bit here, um, uh, and I, because I want to emphasize as we start out the season that when we look at each player and how they did with the rules, we use objective criteria. And this was something that Heidi actually talked about on episode one of the podcast last season, uh, mm -hmm. which I saved for a whole season and used as a, a TikTok commercial, uh, um, you know, earlier was that, you know, she talked about how, you know, we use these criteria. Um, and sometimes that means there can be a fair amount of criticism. Spoiler alert, that's going to be the case here. Uh, so <laughs> please remember, you know, this isn't personal. We, we don't hate people because they played poorly or anything like that. Sometimes I'll get comments like that on my videos. Oh, I can't believe how much you hate this person. No, it's called objective analysis, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, Jelinski was a fun quote unquote character. I, I know he's a real person, but on the show, he was a, fu a fun character uh, to watch in the first episode, but he definitely did some things wrong. And we'll even have some thoughts on things he has said in recent days because it applies back to what happened. Mm -hmm. So just remember, it's not personal. It's just getting to the heart of why each player lost. Uh, but before we see how he did, we do need to mention that the rules we're about to discuss come in a shorter and much more colorful version in poster yes, form. So go to robhiswebsite.com slash yxlostfeed, scroll down to the poster, and click on it. And then our shipping department will rush you a copy. Well, click on it and order it if you don't take that <laughs> Order next it, step. and then yeah. I'll rush you a, yes. a yes. poster, yeah. Um, and uh, also... Uh, you know, Lindsay talked about tag with t-shirts. Well, guess what? We have t-shirts too. Uh, you can get the, the poster t-shirt. Uh, you can get the checklist t-shirt. Uh, today, uh, for those of you on video, you see I'm wearing the poster. Jessica is wearing the checklist. So yeah. look at us. Um, yeah. it's, and, and it's we, like, we're all survivor it out. I like it. Yeah, yeah. We, I know we are. We didn't even coordinate. Uh, we didn't. So we did go, it. Yeah. So go to, again, robhiswebsite.com slash yxlostfeed, uh, click away, order, and then also, you know, if you like the Jeff Probst one, go for that, too. So yeah. get, mm -hmm. you can fill your whole closet just from this podcast. You definitely could. And also with the RHAP memorabilia right. and t-shirts yes. as well. You have a bunch of those, Bloomberg. I, I have a whole pile of shirts, uh, just mm -hmm. Survivor RHAP related, sitting yeah. not three feet from me. So <laughs> you just uh, like rotate through them? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So instead so, of like on Wednesdays, we wear pink. It's like yeah. on Wednesdays, we wear the rules right. of Survivor. Okay. Right. Good. Yeah. I mean, anyone who watches my mini Why Blank Losts for like Australian Survivor or the international mm -hmm. versions, you can see, yeah, I just, you know, I switch shirts so that you can tell which, you know, it's a different podcast or a different. Uh, Love it. Video, so, um, all right. Well, now that we've got the uh, wardrobe uh, talk finished here. Jeff Propes told Jelinski before the game that it would be hard for him to win because he's too empathetic. 
now that he's the first one out, we know that at least the first part of what Jeff said was true. But was his prediction correct as far as the reason? Or was it all the quitting? As usual, it's more complicated than either of those. So we'll need to look at his short but eventful time in the game to figure out why Jelinski lost. Beginning with rule one, uh, you know, Kenzie said the first rule is to not quit. Well, that's not true. Uh, the first and most important rule is actually the scheme and plot. Not quitting is more like rule zero. It's presumed. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's good. I like that. Great yeah. point. Great point. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so with that said, uh, we'll, we'll eventually get to more details on his quits in rule seven. Sorry to make you wait, but I didn't want to juggle the rules in the very first podcast mm -hmm. of the season. In the meantime, Jelinski did seem to make an alliance early as he was in the four-person majority with Q, Tiffany, and Kenzie. At least that's what he thought. In fact, they were excluding him from things like when Tiffany found the beware advantage and turned it into an idol. It's an and indication everyone, except him. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's an indication that he wasn't nearly as solid as he thought he was, though we'll have to wait a little while to discuss exactly why. Listen, um, I just have to say something about Jelinski. It's like, I feel like this is Jelinski's world and we just all live in it according yeah. to Jelinski, yeah. right? Like this, <laughs> we just need to put that out there because most of what we saw and then read and heard after the fact mm -hmm, doesn't really seem to jive. So yeah. <laughs> just, just kind of throwing that out there. That oh, I, I have really... a lot of head scratching yeah. questions in regards to Jelinski's impressions interpretations understanding representations of his game all of these things yeah yeah we'll get to that a lot more later uh yeah. you know, mm -hmm. i don't know that it i mean some of that certainly applies to his scheming and plotting just because of yeah i just need to was. put that out there i just yes. want that you did a disclaimer that's my yes. quick little that's one your disclaimer. Well. <laughs> Lindsay, do you have a disclaimer <laughs> Not yet. I mean, it might come, but, um, you know, and I don't know if you want to talk about this later, but uh, one of the things that um, I noticed was Jalency just kept saying like, Q is my number one. And then you notice when Tiffany is telling Q about um, her beware advantage, mm -hmm. she said like, don't tell Jalinsky. And he was like, man, I'm not going to tell that guy. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't even like, what he said, it was the way that he said oh, it yeah. to where mm -hmm. I honestly, genuinely believed that that was how he was feeling because you could right. see the emotion on his face. That wasn't yeah. just for show. He wasn't like, oh, I I'm never going to tell him. And then he runs back and tell him like, you knew based off of how he said that, that like he wasn't vibing with Jelinski the same way that Jelinski thought he was vibing with him. Yeah. yeah Q definitely led Jelinski on completely. You know, Jelinski's mm -hmm. like, oh, we have a tight alliance and everything. And Q's leading him on, leading him on until he just, boom, drop, drops yeah. the hammer mm -hmm. on him. I actually uh, uh, tweeted something to that effect and Q liked it. So, you know, uh, there you go. Uh, I didn't even tag him in it. So, uh, but yeah, it he was he was definitely he had Jelinski fooled, you know, in terms yeah. of where the alliance was. Now, there isn't really a whole lot more to say in this rule uh, other than, you know, he thought he was in a good spot and he wasn't. But also at one point he said, I'm not a deceptive person, which tells me he was going to have problems no matter what. Uh, yeah. if he couldn't even lie about a card game, which we'll get to later. How was he going to lie about who his real allies were? Uh, yeah. He even uh, flat out told Jess that she was on the chopping block, uh, mm -hmm. even though, you know, he when she asked about it, he backtracked somewhat and used the puzzle as an excuse. But like, why would you tell her, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. So, yeah, I do think, excuse me, being a deceptive person was difficult for him. Mm -hmm. But this is Survivor. Yeah. yeah. And I really do feel like a lot of the things that Jelinski was doing, it was like half the effort necessary. It was mm -hmm. like, oh, I need an alliance. Hey, here's three people. Okay, done. Mm -hmm. And then just kind mm -hmm. of, you know, accepted that that's the way it was going to be. And and he just, there were so many things that he would do some of. And then, and I, I know this is probably going to get into the quitting component too, but it's like, you can't you can't go halfway. And I, I do think one of the moments that we saw with Jelinski was when he was talking about how 
you can never you can never stop and survive her and then he's taking a nap you know it's like yeah. it's like it didn't it just didn't make any sense where he would he would say these things that sounded right you know like oh well i need an alliance i have an alliance but you don't actually have an alliance just because three people are talking to you you know right. that doesn't mean mm -hmm. that you're an alliance you need to make sure that you're all solid and you're together and clearly as lindsay you've already spoken but with q that he mm -hmm. wasn't interested in in working with Jelinski, but Jelinski in his mind was like, "I got that guy," and yeah. so I just do feel like it it very it fell very short of where it needed to be to really solidify it in any way that we could truly call it a four person alliance. Yeah. Well, do you think Jelinski was the fourth in their alliance because they realized? Otherwise, it was going to be 3-3 three, three, and they needed to pull in a fourth. Like, I wonder, had Banu and Jess not been such outsiders, would Jelinski still have been their fourth? And I don't, I don't necessarily know. think so. It feels like Jelinski and Q came in as a unit, at least in Jelinski's right. mind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then they just got together with the other two. We really, at least I don't recall seeing exactly how that alliance formed. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it just kind of was there. Uh, so where sometimes you, well, see, I'm also, you know. I'm wondering what day that conversation took place right. because uh, you're uh, the conversation you have on day one is definitely a lot different than you would on say day three or day four, you know, uh, after yeah. right. you've been spending a was, ridiculously amount of time with someone. I suspect it was day one after they didn't get the sweat challenge, you know? Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. All right, well, we can move to the second rule, which says not to scheme and plot too much and to keep your scheming secret. Now, this is the first place where we'll encounter a reason that Jelinski wasn't as solid uh, in his alliance as he thought. Uh, besides Tiffany asking her allies not to tell Jelinski about the idol, as we mentioned, she and Kenzie also said while voting that he couldn't keep secrets. Uh, Mike asked him about this uh, in, in his interview, and... Uh, he said he trusted Tiffany a bit more than Kenzie and told her they needed to keep an eye on her. But Tiffany immediately told Kenzie about that. Now, I don't think that fully explains both of them saying he couldn't keep secrets mm. because it seems to me it was Tiffany not keeping his secret there. But so clearly other things happened that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but that will not be the last puzzling thing we talk about him saying. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, I do think that, it, again, it goes back to what I had already referenced. It was like, it, it was almost like when Jelinski would get like backed into a little bit of a corner, he was like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, so this is it. Like, this mm -hmm. is what really happened. This is the truth. And so it was like, he couldn't keep things a secret because it was like, ask him two more questions. And then he right. rolled over and he's like, yeah, okay. That's yeah. a good point, Jeff. We did quit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, um, well, are we allowed to talk about, no, go ahead. Well, I was just going to keep going with this rule, but, uh, you know, you're allowed to talk about anything as long as you don't move ahead of the rules. That's all. You know? Well, that's what I'm worried about. Like, uh, <laughs> when we talk about the secret keeping, am I allowed to talk about the journey or do we want to push that let's, to later? Let's do that in this, in the seventh rule. Perfect. Okay. Um, Look, she's checking in with you. I know. I, love that. Yeah. I just jump ahead and then he's like, Jessica, we're going to get there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now, another thing, Jelinski She's such a did, rule follower. Well, good, good. Like, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> With you guys, that's yeah. it. Ah, at that. a camp, at a camp, right? Yeah. You, you, that's why you got promoted. Camp, true. Um, true. Now, another thing Jelinski did, which we didn't even see, was telling everyone he was going idol hunting. Now, of course, this also applies to Rule 7, but... Saying it so blatantly means it applies here, too. Uh, in telling mm -hmm. Mike Bloom that, he added, people don't say that. That's kind of an outrageous statement. Uh, yeah, it mm -hmm. is, with good reason. Yeah. And yeah. he also said, Q knew I was a gamer, and I definitely didn't hide that. So, basically, he acknowledged completely breaking this rule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and and I I think that he had these ideas that he was going to be some incredible player that was going to break some ceiling that exists in survivor and become I mean, he's been using the yes. term legendary and and things of that nature and so i think in his mind he was like i'm going to come up with something that no one's ever done before but maybe no one's ever done it before because 
it's a bad idea. You know, like mm-hmm. you just shouldn't do that. And it's not going to make you a legend and survivor because you told everybody I'm going idol hunting. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. that's not a good idea. Um, yeah. So I, I just feel like there was a lot of that happening with Jelinski where it was like these, he mentioned it again in another point of his game where he thought that it would be like this, there's such an incredible move. If I could just basically tell her she's getting voted out and then get her voted out. It's like, isn't that what we do? Isn't we yeah. try, yeah. try to get people voted out? Like that's not a new concept. So it was just very interesting to see where mm-hmm. he was falling in the game of Survivor because he he claimed to be like a super fan and like really know the game. But then it was like he wanted to leave a mark on Survivor in some way and become one of those memorable players, which is also why he wanted to go by Jelinski, his last name, right. because he could be like a Cochran and. But yeah, like it's just it wasn't all jiving very well. And it just didn't work out the way that I think Jelinski really hoped it was going to. Well, you talk about super fan, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. we use that word a lot in our survivor community. Yeah. And there's so many different layers and levels. Um, and I consider myself a super fan, you know, could I rattle off like the vote out orders and stuff? No. Right. But right. the difference at least for me and Jelinski, you know, if we're going to compare the two is I've been watching since 2000. Right. Mm-hmm. Jelinski, how old is he? 21? 22. Right? What, yeah. He was 21. 22? When he played, yeah. Okay. So yes, you've watched every single episode or every single season and every single episode three times, mm-hmm. but it, it's more just understanding the game right. as mm-hmm. a whole. Yes. And, yeah. and, for me, it's like I've had so many years and just building on layers and layers of knowledge of the game. Um, and, and then you're also pulling in like podcasts and, you know, going to events and, and just everything mm-hmm. in general. He hasn't had that. Right. So right. you can be a super fan and know a lot about the game, but not necessarily have a lot of knowledge and how to play the game. Um, yes. and, and I mm-hmm. really do think his age was a huge factor and why he got voted out. Yeah. And, and, and his inexperience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, something we've discussed before being able to absorb it, like you said, you know, yeah. the right. difference in watching for all this time, watching week to week, thinking about it, debating mm-hmm. it, discussing it, mm-hmm. listening to other people's viewpoints about yeah. it and putting it on and just jamming through it three times. Right. Over. Like, yeah. You yeah. know, because you're doing that, you're going to absorb certain things, but you're not going to, get everything you're just yeah, right not um, yeah and i think that you know. the point that you make too is really great Lindsay. where when the when the season when the show first started it was mm-hmm. all people were talking about right like it was yeah, it was right. the like big when survivor was was for borneo was happening it was the you know the cover of the tv guide something mm-hmm. that doesn't exist anymore and, and it was in and, and it was like the water cooler discussion kind of thing at work and at school and you watch survivor either. Yeah, I know, right? But it so it was a much different water cool, wait, water much, cooler. Wait, water cooler? You know, and so that we worked. grew up watching yeah. and experiencing Survivor in a yeah. much different way because there were those conversations happening, and then there were comparisons when the next season would come out, and you're like, mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, I wonder how mm-hmm. different it's gonna be from the last season. And to try to cram all of that into such a, a short amount of time, I really do think affects your ability to really process it all and understand the nuances of it because you haven't had time to let it marinate. And I do, I completely agree with your assessment on that. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to watch all of the seasons. It's a whole Mm -hmm. nother thing to understand ramifications of actions and how certain gameplay works and doesn't work. And if you're going into survivor with this idea that I want to be memorable and I want to be legendary, you might not be approaching the game in the correct form because I think the people who, have become legendary and become memorable. That wasn't their goal. They were just, they figured mm-hmm. out the game and they played the game well. And then that turned them into a legend. Right. So I think his, his focus was off. Right. right. Yeah. A hundred percent. And the thing is about watching the show, you know, there's a reason that we do this podcast that I started doing this as articles, uh, you know, way back when, and it's because you don't always get, everything from just watching the show Mm -hmm. and if you don't remember what happened five episodes or i mean in his case there's not five episodes Mm -hmm. earlier but you know as you're watching 
you need to keep all of those things in mind. There's a reason right. we take notes from the first episode and in the finale, we'll probably be bringing up notes from the first episode because mm -hmm. things are planted there and you have to remember them. And you, you know, you get all this other information. If you're just blasting through the show, you're not going to get all of that. It's right. like watching Big Brother without live feeds, which I'm sorry, Canadians, I hear you're going to have to do it. <laughs> um, you know, it's just, it's not the same. Right. Uh, so. Well, it's, you're comparing it to like, all right, uh, you're studying for a test. You're, right. you can either cram for the test or you can spend your entire semester, like taking in information and, and building off of, you know, what you learn at the beginning. And, and the other issue is, is that. I, I just want to. Um, let it be known. Yeah, I planned for every <laughs> test. I didn't ever do it the other I did way. too, but it was why yeah. like I didn't yeah. do so well when I was younger. But a, a great example is, um, and where his age is a factor is, you know, I took French in um, high school and I just didn't absorb the information as well as I should have. And then now that we're getting ready to go to Paris, I'm doing like French Duolingo and I'm absorbing the information mm -hmm. more. And I think it's because I'm just at a different place in my life. I'm older. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm processing information a little bit differently. Um, and I think, again, like that's the difference with him. And, and you can watch, you know, all these seasons back to back and three times, but how much are you really taking in from that uh, yeah i mean uh, you know i will say you know i said i crammed for every day in college i did yeah. i never learned how to study properly i'll mm -hmm. just say mm -hmm. in school in school i did not learn how to study properly because either i remembered stuff or i crammed mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it got me through you know i mean i i did well in college but then i went to grad school Mm -hmm. And I was going to go for my PhD. And in my school for engineering, you had to take PhD qualifying exams. PhD qualifying oh. exams covered everything you have learned to that oh. point. And a couple oh. things you hadn't learned yet. Mm -hmm. I sat there with all of my old notes, <laughs> with all of the books, with everything. I literally didn't know where to begin. I postponed qualifying exams twice. And then I decided I'm not getting a PhD. I just can't do this. So right. it is not a good way. You know, I, I kind of jokingly said, oh, that was me. It came back to haunt me. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Now yeah. I did, you know, I'm, I'm still here and I've retired from a job. I didn't get a PhD. So you're not all calling me Dr. <laughs> Bloomberg, but. Um, oh but, my gosh, that would be crazy, Dr. Yeah. Bloomberg. Uh, but <laughs> I, you know, it is something that I learned. And then, you know, as a parent, you know, tried to instill in my kids, you know, when I, mm -hmm. when I saw uh, that one of them was, it was, you know, school was a little too easy. I upped the challenge level for them because yeah. I didn't want that same thing happening to them that they never right. learned yeah. how to study. Right. And so I know that's a tangent, uh, but it, I, I think it's appropriate here that that's mm -hmm. kind of the same way that um, some people are watching Survivor now. And yeah. it's, yeah, it's not the same thing as studying and learning everything as you're going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, let me ask you guys something real quick, because I know I listened to Wide Blank Lost before I played to study and, and prepare for the game. But um, I know that we've got a bunch of hopefully potential players um, that are listening right now. And my question is, is like, do you think it benefits people that want to play the game to go back all the way to the beginning and watch those seasons? Or do you think it's more important to like really focus on this new era and just, you know, maybe mm -hmm. watch those over and over and just really focus on this new game instead of old school? Cause like how beneficial is season one, season two to players that are coming in and playing the game now? I don't know. I go back and forth. Mm, yeah. I mean, yeah. I still think they are beneficial because you see how it all started. And you know, like these rules started mm -hmm. with season one and right. they've changed a little <laughs> bit, but the heart of them is still there. And Jeff even right. said at the beginning of last season, you know, the game at its heart is still the same. And that's mm -hmm. a fair point. Yeah, because if you go back to Borneo, 
when when the term alliance mm -hmm. was dropped, I think the I think production just about lost their minds because nobody expected like a group of people to come together mm -hmm. and actually form an alliance. And all of a sudden, you know, Richard Hatch is like, well, we have this four person alliance. And mm -hmm. that was where it all began. And so I do think that that's a really valid point. Like that's where the heart of the game exists. But the new era is all of this extra stuff. It's the idols and the uh, beware advantages mm -hmm. and all of these extra little components that aren't necessarily part of each individual person's game and how they're going to mm -hmm. interact socially and, and form those bonds. That's like another part of it. So I think you, you do have to do both because you mm -hmm. never know what they're going to throw at you now with the new era, but that Alliance component and creating those bonds is what really is going to carry you through the game. So I think it's, it's a great, it's a great question, but I think you got to do all of it. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> you got to do both. Yeah. Um, yes. And go back and listen, read or listen to all the why blank lost. Now reading them. Great. It's a little point. more difficult. You got to find me and, <laughs> and I'll give you the link to the uh, Google archive version of them. But, uh, <laughs> You know, I've done that for uh, several people, um, but listening, I mean, we have what? Right. I, I think I, I, I meant to do check this beforehand. I think I have eight and a half seasons, maybe, or not eight and a half, mm -hmm. eight and a half years, maybe nine, you know, I think wow. eight and a half years of Why Blank Lost on wow. podcasts now, uh, because I mean, we started, you know, before you, Jessica, mm -hmm. so I know. Uh, me and Rob, so, and how many years ago was that? So I know. Uh, 2016 i've been uh, right it was when i yeah it's wow been a long time yeah yeah been a long time all right listen we should go on to the next yeah, rule we though, because we are, okay, we sorry sorry no yeah. no but this is a great i love this discussion this yeah, is lovely it is and uh it's it's funny because uh listeners beforehand we were talking and i was like ah we never go on tangents on this podcast <laughs> um no, it's like one of my toxic traits so <laughs> yeah. i love oh, it i, I think this is toxic great. about it yeah um, except people are going to look at the time on this and go, what did they talk about? I know. Uh, <laughs> that's what we talked about. Um, I know. Uh, all right. Well, we're not we going to quit. Yeah. Well, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no quitting the podcast, not even <laughs> listeners. Uh, so the third rule tells players to be flexible. Uh, in his pregame interview, Jelinski said he thought his superpower in the game would be how he can adapt. So, Lindsay, did he live up to his expectations and show this superpower? I didn't see much adapting in uh, this episode or flexibility. Um, but, and, and I think I'm looking at it a little differently um, than you guys are and even like my husband and my kids. Uh, mm -hmm. Because the reaction that they had to this episode and the reaction that I had um, were very different. And I think it's because... I'm so close to my season still that I'm, I, I keep trying to justify people's behavior by saying like, well, maybe there was something that we didn't see. Um, a perfect example mm. is I was really disappoint, disappointed in Jelinski's um, ne negotiation skills when uh, they went on the journey and then come to find out there was a lot more conversation that we missed. And so mm. it's going to be very, very hard for me to kind of be, snarky with this because I just keep thinking like maybe we're missing something and and I think you guys are a lot more removed from that so it might be uh, a little bit easier for you guys to have opinions than me um, but I, I didn't see a lot of flexibility and I, uh, I think we are more removed in terms of how recently Jessica has played and mm -hmm. how recently I have played which would be <laughs> uh, but um but I do, you know, I, one, you know, uh, one thing we try to do is take things like that into account. Mm -hmm. And yes, it is difficult. Mm -hmm. What makes it more difficult, as we'll talk about, is that his interviews are less enlightening than some. And in fact, mm -hmm. uh, and darkening in some ways. Uh, mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we'll get to that more there. But yeah, I, yeah. You know, <laughs> I agree I, and about I do, that. Go ahead. Well, I, 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 I'm curious how much conversation did we really miss because of other things as, as Bloomberg mm -hmm. has hinted to like with his interviews mm -hmm. that it's like Monday morning quarterbacking, right. Where all of a sudden mm -hmm. he wants to try to justify some of the things that he did, 
by providing information that we'll never have. And again, mm -hmm. this is why, you know, David said, we go back and we try to look at everything and put everything together. But when there are times that I read these exit interviews and go, oh, that mm -hmm. makes so much sense. Right. So right. I am very much looking forward to exit interviews to come who can tell mm -hmm. us whether or not what Jelinski said is true because that's mm -hmm. where my head is at right now. Like I want some, I want some confirmation with some of the tidbits that he shared. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm definitely curious about that. If it happens. I mean, I know he talked in his interviews like, Oh, they were talking about me for the whole game. They wanted well, to that's what I mean. Like, chocolate. I want to know. I, I don't think we're going to hear much about him. And more. that's why you know. I just, I I'm waiting. I will be waiting yeah. for this. <laughs> we want to name the tribe. The Merge Tribe Jelinski. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to hear this. I want to know. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And it's just, I, 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 you said something that triggered something in my mind, but then I lost it. So, uh, I but uh, no, no, uh, it's my mind that lost it, not yours. Uh, so, I, I, you know, continuing with this rule, I, I do want to say, admittedly, he didn't have much time to show us his flexibility, mm. but. I, I agree with you, Lindsay. He didn't. Uh, he he had several opportunities and went the wrong way pretty much every time. Uh, mm -hmm. Even with what we discussed in the second rule about some things he said, part of adapting is to know what you're adapting to. You don't just tell people your plans without having right. any idea how they'll react. You got to read the crowd. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll talk a little bit more about reading the crowd later, too. Uh, okay, so if we're talking about flexibility, let's mm -hmm. let's get into the sweat challenge. All right, if what he says is true, which is that it was Q suggesting first that they quit, um, you guys know uh, from speaking with me in previous seasons my feelings about quitting, and that's that <laughs> it'll never happen. Mm -hmm. So when my husband and I were talking about like, okay, let's say you're having to do the sweat challenge, Lindsay, what would you do? If I volunteer for a challenge or, um, you know, doing the, the sweat uh, challenge that they had to do, or if I'm volunteering for a puzzle and an immunity challenge, there is not a chance in hell I will ever quit. Right. So even if I know that I can't complete this sweat challenge, but I have volunteered and I have to go back to my tribe mates mm -hmm. and tell them what the outcome is. I will be crawling in that sand until the mm -hmm. last piece of sand drops in the hourglass. Yeah. The only other way that I would have considered quitting because my partner in this challenge has suggested they're quitting and they want to quit. Because I, I can think of lots of instances where somebody would be sitting there not doing the challenge and I would mm. continue doing it just to be able to say, well, I didn't quit. Is Right. They were filling up two urns at once. Why didn't they look at the hourglass, see how much time was there, see how long it takes them to fill up one urn, and then look at the hourglass and be like, realistically, how much time do we have left? This is how much time it took us to fill up the first urn. Do we even have enough time to fill up the right. second urn? And at that point, I would have considered mm -hmm. maybe stopping. Mm -hmm. But that's mm -hmm. like, like, why aren't we being flexible here? Like, why aren't we trying to think outside the box and figure out ways before they just say like, well, there's not, you know, we're not seeing a lot of right. change in the, in the level of the water in the urn. Like, why don't they kind of work together to say, okay, if we are going to quit, like, Let's try as hard as we can before we have to like pull the plug on it. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. I mean, those are all good points. I, some of it I'd, I'd like to discuss in rule seven, but um, mm -hmm. some of it, you know, the flexibility aspect of it, you're right. He, I mean, and, and so much of it comes down to his word against cues. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And a lot of evidence that I have to discuss in the seventh rule. Okay. Um, oh, so he's you, coming with receipts. Oh, I am. <laughs> Uh, so, I love that. Uh, so <laughs> I do too. Don't mind if we could put a pin in that, but uh, I know, I know. We should have just started with seven. We should have just started with seven because I, I feel know, like I, now I, everything I, I'm going to say, I'm going to be like, I'm saving it for seven. Yeah, <laughs> I, like I said, I thought about it, and I, 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 I know. And yeah, uh, I know. there's another uh, part about flexibility that we'll talk about in another rule too, where he says something. I'm going to refer back to it, but it's hard with you know some of this. So, but hey, mm -hmm. that way people can't quit halfway through the podcast. They right, have they to have to get to rule. Thing. Seven. So, 
All right, so let's do rule four, which will move us towards rule seven. Uh, it tells yeah. players not to let their emotions control them. And this is where Jeff and Dr. Liza thought Jelinski would have his biggest problems. Quite frankly, I don't think it was really even an issue, mostly because there wasn't time. Overall, the rule is a tough one for me to evaluate with Jelinski because I'm not sure exactly what was controlling his mind. Mm. I think we can chalk at least some of it up to emotions in terms of the way he was evaluating situations. And now, so specifically what I'm talking about is that while we didn't see it, he talked to tribal council about how all these different things happened to him. Cutting up his feet in the sweat challenge, losing his water bottle, being bitten by a crab, etc. But mm -hmm. as Jeff told Mike Bloom, he clearly came into this game feeling that things happened to him. I was a little surprised by how often it seemed to be things happening to him rather than this is my situation and here's what I need to do with it. And I agree with Jeff. All those were situations he caused or contributed yes. to. Not things yeah. just randomly mm -hmm. happened to him. Even the crab biting him was because he was poking around in the dark looking for an idol. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, we all have people in our lives who are like, oh, all these things happened to me. And mm -hmm. you look at them and you go, no, they didn't just happen to you. You put yourself in situations that caused them to happen, you yeah. know? And so, you know, I... That's what Jelinski sounds like, at least in this game. Yeah, I don't disagree mm -hmm. at all. I think that's a perfect, perfect explanation as to what was happening with Jelinski. Mm -hmm. He's like, so just not, not like taking York, accountability. It's like a dark cloud. He was bringing yeah. the dark mm -hmm. cloud with him. Yes. Yeah. But everyone out there has a similar story. Like, okay, I may not have gotten bitten by a crap, but then this happened to me. Like, mm -hmm. everyone's struggling out there. You know, oh, it's, sure. it's not like. Yeah. I didn't notice him struggling any more than anybody else, you know? Yeah. No. Well, and I think that less that's, than Jess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right. I think that he's, there's a struggle component. And then there's also mm -hmm. like the, what do you do with that struggle component? Right. Where mm -hmm. if you are facing it, like Jelinski is facing it, it's, he's not acknowledging the fact that he is also bringing some of these things upon himself. And, and so I, yes, you're definitely 100% going to struggle when you're out playing this game because it's hard and you have no food and, and it, and it has all of these effects on you. But also when you're putting yourself into those situations, it's like, then you have to deal with the consequences of it too. And you can't just blame the situation. You also have to be mindful of, well, what did I do to contribute? And was I part of that as well? And I think that's a hard mm -hmm. thing for people who play Survivor to really like do when you're in the moment. And I know I've had a lot of reflection on myself, like, oh, damn it. If I had done that differently in the moment mm -hmm. and realizing it then, but sometimes you just don't because you are playing the game and you're in this different headspace. And so it's much different than what you expect when you're sitting on your couch watching and, and saying, how would I act in that situation? And I think for Jelinski, again, it's like, it's one thing when it, he was experiencing it. And I think now as he's explaining it, it's like, oh, well, I'm going to shift a little bit and, mm -hmm. and move a little bit and, and over explain or try to make it something else. And that's why, again, I'm very interested if anyone else is going to touch upon the things that he's spoken about right. relative to his game. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, we can move to the fifth rule, which reminds players they need to pretend to be nice and play the social game in his pregame interview. He compared his charisma to Rick Devins, uh, Jessica, just when she's going to get a drink of water, uh, do you think he was pretty much on par there? Is Jelinski the next Rick Devins? He, I'm sorry, Jelinski, but you are definitely not the next Rick Devins. Uh, Rick Devins was truly, I think, one of the just, I, you couldn't help but love that guy. And I know that there are people that have, have different opinions about Rick Devins, but there is something about what he exuded when he was playing the game and just the the fun that he brought to the, to the tribe and to the, the moment. That's not what Jelinski was bringing to the table. And so I can't say that he's the next, next Rick Devins. He's something for sure, mm -hmm. but I don't, mm -hmm. I wouldn't, I wouldn't analogize <laughs> him to a Rick Devins. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do yeah. that. Now that was a strange comparison. I mean, and, and I don't know if he threw out Rick Devins because he, admires and wants mm. to emulate mm -hmm. his game because it was a great game. 
Um, but that's just, that's a weird comparison. I, I don't yeah. see it at all. Yeah. I don't either. Now, now he also, would have gone with someone a little bit younger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now he also said pregame that he worried his kryptonite would be arrogance, uh, saying he used to argue and argue with people till they admitted he was right. Mm. Though he calmed down on that front. I'm not really sure how to describe Jelinski's behavior in this regard. I do think there was some arrogance in terms of absolutely believing he was right about everything. Until he just said, well, no, I'm not. I'm well, not. but no, he, he was still <laughs> right about it. You know, right down to insisting several means seven, and which he's still arguing about. Uh, yeah. You know, um, and then another point of arrogance came in even just by going by his last name. You know, Jessica, you brought it up. Yeah. I thought coming in, he was doing it because there are so many Davids. And that's what... You know, I, I thought people called him by his last name in everyday life. And I even talked about that in our pregame podcast. Mm -hmm. But it turns out Mike Bloom confirmed from being there that at the start of the game, he told Jeff he was going to go by his last name and referenced all the great players having last names. Yes. As Jeff later told Mike in an interview, he walked in into it pretty bold, saying, I'm going to proclaim myself as a future great player. And it kind of went downhill from there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this is, and I think that it's interesting to just bring up that the arrogance component where if we go to the tribal council, when they were discussing the quitting and, mm -hmm. and he was adamant that they didn't quit, didn't quit, didn't want to quit. didn't want, And then Jeff's like, you told us yesterday that you, you quit. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, that's a fair <laughs> point. Yeah, I, yeah, we did. Quit. You know and It's like, wait, what? Like, can we go back to the, let's roll the tape. Like, we it's we actually saw it and then like you admitted it and told us what happened and now you're going to sit in the same space with the same people and say something completely different that takes a particular set of balls to do i'm sorry but to be like <laughs> i'm going to flat out lie to yeah. the people who saw it happen, who experienced mm -hmm. it who know exactly what went down and then just be like no 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 oh yeah no fair point you're right we did yeah you're right it, they need those um what uh, it's an insurance company and i don't i don't need to give them promotional value but you know they have the uh the replay moment where someone gets into an argument uh -huh. and they throw the yeah. flag you know they need that on yes. survivor let's go to the replay you know <laughs> the tape yes so i just it's yeah. and i and i'm and I'm, I'm not saying that you shouldn't double down and and necessarily lie about certain things on survivor but you can only lie mm -hmm. about those things that no one else can call you out on right right and if you've already made an admission to something and then here you are in tribal council trying to say something completely different you're going to get called out, which is exactly what Jeff did, which I love that Jeff was like, hold yes. up. Wait, mm -hmm. again. <laughs> That's not what you said yesterday. Yeah, so, I, yeah. So that was I, interesting. I do want to say, I can't say for sure if he was lying or it goes back to what you said very early, Jessica, it's Jelinski's world and we're just living in it. Yes. Because and I do be think he had his own viewpoint of the way things happen mm -hmm. and, you know, convinced himself whether it was arrogance or some other issue convinced mm -hmm. himself that that was the way it happened until people kept piling on yeah uh yeah. so you know um but do you think that applies to him saying that it was q's idea to yes. put the challenge first Yes. Uh, we'll, okay. we'll get to that shortly, but I yes, know. I'm I, sorry. I no, no, it's fine. I do think that, I think that, I think that he either misinterpreted or misremembers or has mm -hmm. changed things in his mind. We have to remember memory is not a roll the tape moment, you know? Right. And, yeah, that's I fair. Mean, uh, so did he convince himself of that over the past nine months? Mm, maybe mm -hmm. uh maybe he was right. convinced of it from the start although if he was convinced of it from the start why didn't he bring it up right away but yeah um right you know so yeah memory is a funny thing mm -hmm. <laughs> um now another funny thing is that going back to his pregame interview and i think it's worth discussing in this rule he said he thought he would be able to easily read the jury if he made it that far. Oh, no. <laughs> and now here's the thing. He couldn't even read his tribe mates starting from the yeah. way they would react when right. he told them about the journey. 
Uh, not to mention them hiding from him that he was about to be voted out. So, or when he said mm-hmm. several means seven. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. So, you know, we talked earlier. I said this is going to, you know, come back. Read the room, uh, and, yeah. and so I, I, that's part of the social game is being able to read people. Yeah. So. Yeah, but how well were you able to read people at twenty-two versus your ages now? Oh God, I was totally different at 22. So. Yeah. Right, exactly. I, I think this is a very, very young cast. And Lindsay, I think mm-hmm. that you bring up again a really good point. The oldest individual is 47 years old. Yeah. And I do think that there is something to be said about that life experience and what mm-hmm. you've been able to live through to then bring into mm-hmm. this game. And so, yeah, I think age is a huge factor as well because you haven't you haven't had enough time to really have those moments with enough people at 22 to right. really be a great judge of character and and how mm-hmm. someone is reacting to you. I, I, I agree. I think that that makes a huge difference for sure. Yeah, it explains it, yeah. but he still had that issue. You know, I oh, mean, it goes sure, back yeah. to a, a mm-hmm, few right. seasons ago, and I, I honestly don't remember which season it was. It could have been yours, Lindsay, where mm-hmm. one of the players coming in was very young and said, uh, in in her pregame said, I think I'll do well because I, you know, managed to get a whole bunch of people to come to a prom party. Oh, and it yes. Was, mm-hmm. It was like, yeah, that's not the same thing. No, no. not at all. No. no, but at that age and in their world, right. it is a lot. Right. You know, because yes. you think like, oh, I've had so much experience in my 22 years. Yeah. Get, get to 42 and yeah, then come exactly. talk to yes. me about how oh, experienced yeah, exactly. you were at 22. Yeah. But, you, it, but it takes getting to 42 to like right. realize that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You, you mm-hmm. don't know um, what you don't know. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I am going to keep focusing on Jelinski's age because I want to believe that um, similar to if I had played the game when I applied for season two, yeah. I would have been a completely different player. And, and I want to believe that Jelinski wouldn't have made the same mistakes uh, later on as he did now, mm. if he had just had a little bit more life experience and a little bit more age. Well, under, mm-hmm. so. And that involves him learning from mm-hmm. that. And, you know, Jeff talked yes. in his interview with either Mike or Dalton about, I hope he learns these things, but I'm not sure he will. Yeah. You know, oh, like, wow. Well, Jeff said, I, I think he may have taken the wrong lessons from this. Now, mm-hmm. this is still only nine wow. months away. So, yeah. you know, give him some time. Maybe he looks back on it and mm-hmm. does uh, learn some things here. So, so mm-hmm. yeah, but in the meantime, we'll move on to the sixth rule, which warns against being too much of a threat. And in his interview with Mike Bloom, Jelinski acknowledged that he was quote, a really dangerous player in survivor, uh, because he was behaving independently and didn't, and people mm-hmm. didn't know what he was going to do or if they could count on his vote. Yeah. Having someone like that in your tribe is dangerous, uh, yeah. which, you know, that's, that's why you shouldn't do that. Uh, but, right. But Jelinski said he could tell how people were reacting to him in that regard. But, quote, at the time, a tiger can't change his stripes. But in my heart, I wish I did change my behavior because I was definitely aware of it. This is the part I was talking about that references back to rule three and flexibility. Mm -hmm. It's a combination of breaking these two rules, you know, being too much of a threat and knowing you are coming off as a threat. And not doing anything to change that impression. And also, I find it fascinating that he's kind of labeled himself as a threat. Like he was, yeah. mm-hmm. he was proud of the fact that he got voted out because they took they had to take out a threat. So the fact that they took him out so early because he was a threat. And it's like mm, maybe it had nothing to do with the fact that you were a threat. Maybe it had to do with the fact that uh, they couldn't trust you or the game mm-hmm. that you were going to play because you were quitting and I know we haven't talked about that's that yet. What made, but, that's what made him a threat actually. He yeah. even said but that. That's, was, but that's what I mean. You know, so it's like he's interpreting it right. as well they were they were threatened by my game play and it's like no you were a huge risk for yeah. them to yes. continue to play the game with. And so this is that that component of this rule that I think is fascinating is that there are different things that can cause you to be a threat to another person's game. Mm-hmm. And it's not always because you're a great player and they're worried that you're going to win. Mm-hmm. It's you're not a great player and they're worried that you're going to be a detriment their to game. their game. Yeah. So they yeah. have you got to go. You know? So it's yeah. like maybe you were a threat, Jelinski, just a different kind of right. threat. Right. <laughs> 
not a legendary threat. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. But because well, the real threats in the game, how often are they voted out first? They're not. Not. Not, not yeah. because I mean, they, people, they know how they, to manage that level, right? There are, mm -hmm. there are more than a few who have come out and said, after being voted out, you know, their final words are, well, they had to get rid of the big threat first. And we sit there and go, no, that is, that's not Yeah, it. that's not <laughs> it. No. 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 All right. Well, we can finally move on to the long-awaited <laughs> Rule 7, <laughs> which covers idols and advantages in game mechanics. <laughs> Uh, yes. Now, as, as we've said, this is the best place to discuss <laughs> how we should have handled those quits. But, but first, I feel like Julie Chen, Moonfest. Uh, we have the issue of idol hunting. Uh, we, we had discussed it a bit in the second rule after he mm -hmm. announced to everyone he was doing it. Even after that, he talked in interviews about how he got busted by Kenzie and Banu yet again and admitted what he was doing. So just, mm -hmm. I, I think we can keep that part of Rule 7 short and say, don't do that. Stop it. Just. just don't tell people. Moving. Well, hold on, because I, I, I thought about this earlier, and I wanted okay. to say something. Uh, at what point do you tell people that you're idol hunting? Do you wait until you know that you're the person that's going to be voted out, and you can almost guarantee that nobody else has found the idol on the islands, and then you go off and say that you're looking for an idol in hopes that the other players are going to be like, he might have it. We need a backup mm -hmm. plan. But I can't think of any other reason why you would tell somebody that you're looking for idols. I mean, unless I don't you think are you need so, to tell people. Yeah, unless you are so yeah. great right. and you're working together. Yeah. But mm -hmm. usually okay. that's still no. Because I mean, you're it's so, really fair. You're, oh, you're so tight and working together on day two, like you said, Lindsay, <laughs> could mean nothing by day mm -hmm. five. Right. Right. And I think it's a very fair assumption that everyone is idol hunting, mm -hmm. right? Like everyone knows yeah. that everyone is idol hunting. And if someone disappears for a long amount of time, yeah. then there will be those discussions as to so-and-so must be idol hunting. So it is kind of just a known entity that you're going to be looking mm -hmm. for idols, but you don't need to announce it and tell everyone right. that you're doing it because it's not going to help you unless there is that, right. that, final like i i gotta do something right now because mm -hmm. i need to try to turn the tide a little bit but yeah i mean overall it's just not it's not great gameplay at all I, it's like so many other things it's a known entity you're going to be scheming it's a known entity right. you're going to be lying mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean you tell people i mean right. in, unless you're like right. dr will on big brother you know uh, i'm going to mm -hmm. lie to all of you and you'll still give me the win uh <laughs> you know um but but side note, did you see uh, the cliff of Banu? And I think he was like the first person in line as the tribe was like walking uh, through the woods and you could just and see his, his eyes, eyes oh, yeah. were like, <laughs> yes. like I can't even replicate the speed in right. which his eyes were yeah. moving right now. Like that was insane. Yeah. I was like, yeah. homeboy mm -hmm. is working it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> like there are no days off for that boy out there. That's right. No, um, there no. Yeah. Um, no. All right, moving to the sweat challenge. Yes, we're finally there. Mm -hmm. So we know he volunteered. He said he could definitely do it. Those were his words. Mm -hmm. And then he didn't because, you know, several. Um, mm -hmm. I, I had plenty of thoughts on this, but this is the part where Jeff said it so well in his interview with Mike that I'm just going to quote him. You can't volunteer for sweat and then quit, but not own the fact that you mm -hmm. quit. And if you mm -hmm. want to quit, that's fine. Or if his feet were really messed up, that's legitimate. But there's a way of owning it, uh, of saying, man, I messed up. I volunteered for that. I had Q with me, and I couldn't finish it, and I feel awful. But when you start stringing stories, like Jeff had said several hours, several is seven. It's in the word. Then you just start mm -hmm. losing credibility, where people are like, I don't know if I can trust you because you can't even see your own truth. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why and, I quoted it yeah. because it was like, I mean, I, I could not find, it is not often that I will say this. I could not find better words than Jeff had. Yeah. That was yeah. perfect. Um, now I know that Jelinski claimed in interviews and you, you mentioned it, that Q brought up the quit. I will normally, ex <coughs> excuse me, Except I'm getting choked up by this. Uh, I will normally accept most of what people say in their interviews unless there's a reason not to. In this case, I'm afraid there are a lot of reasons not to. Mm 
Mm. First, Q immediately denied it on Twitter. Uh, oh, did he? Yes. Uh, when wow. one of the interviewers posted it, he responded and just in one word said, def or in two, or I don't remember if he said definitely not or you know, mm -hmm. whatever he said, he denied it. Um, if he was being some devious master strategist, like Jelinski mm -hmm. suggested, because Jelinski was like, oh, he played me and he's doing this. Why not own it? Why would Q not come out and say, oh, yeah, I did that. I, yeah, uh, I, yeah. I caused it and got him to do it. Instead, Q's like, uh, no. Mm -hmm. More importantly to me was the way Jeff reacted at Tribal Council and the way he spoke to Mike Bloom about it immediately afterwards. Because from those, it's pretty clear to me this was not a trick of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I watched it twice. I think all of us have watched it twice. Yeah, it, it would have had to be some pretty tricky editing to, to get this done. Jeff, when he was talking about it, truly believed Jelinski quit. If something else had happened, you know, a producer who was out there would have told him. Oh, for so that sure. Jeff would have yes. that information. Mm -hmm. Plus, Mike relayed. Because, again, Mike Bloom was out there. He saw the voting confessionals, including the ones we did not see. And Q said, you're a good kid, but you can't give up so much. There's no audience there. He's not yeah. trying to convince his tribe mates. Right. Why would he say it if it weren't true? Mm -hmm. And let's face it, we've seen Jelinski on the show not taking ownership of his actions until yeah. he was forced to do that. So yeah. with all of that in mind. I suspect things were not the way he said. It wouldn't surprise me, and I alluded to this earlier, if Q did, if he said something. Like, we saw at one point Jelinski sitting in the water. So mm -hmm. maybe Q said something to him like, are you thinking of quitting? Uh, and, you know, or something like that. But that's not the same thing as saying we should quit. Right, yeah. Yeah, great point. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm telling you this right now, if I was doing a sweat challenge and I was busting my butt, and I saw somebody sit down. I mean, that's a, yeah. a new level of anger you're going to see from me. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I try to look at it both ways, which was mm -hmm. like, okay, what if he had been doing it for three hours? And he said, I've got to go to the bathroom. And he's like sitting in the sand, like going to the bathroom. Yeah. Like I, I'm, I try to justify like why, why they would do some of the things that they would do. And it was the same thing. Cause my mm -hmm. husband said to me after he heard the Jelinski exit interview, he's like, there's no way in hell that Q suggested first to quit. And Jelinski just went, went along with it. And I yeah. was like, well, what if they didn't show that? And yeah. you know, and Andy was well, like, no I way, think, no way. Yeah. And I, and I think the Jeff component is a really interesting role of the tribal council, because if yeah. there is one thing that Jeff is very good at, at tribal council mm -hmm. is not throwing anyone under the bus but having yes. enough knowledge base to know how to ask a question. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he mm -hmm. actually threw Jelinski under the bus, I think speaks <laughs> yeah. volumes to the information mm -hmm. that he had, because he would normally mm -hmm. not do that to a player unless it actually was something that did happen. And we saw it happen because Jelinski had already admitted to it previously. And so I can't imagine that Jeff would have gone down that path either if there right. were additional bits of information because he doesn't want to blow, up, mm -hmm. blow up anyone's game. And in that moment, I think it became very clear to everyone that no, what Jelinski is saying is yeah. Jelinski yeah. and not Q. And also Q's facial expressions during that whole time at tribal council. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about the eyes? I mean, mm -hmm. his eyes were like <laughs> yeah. rolling into the back of his head. I, I was like, <laughs> that man right there is not happy. And I don't, I don't blame him for feeling that way because yeah. now he has to be on the defensive and try to convince his tribe that no, no, that is not what happened. And so, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I do think that that is a, that's a, a misrepresentation by Jelinski as to what actually transpired. Yeah. 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 Great point. So then of course, Jelinski pushed to go on the journey where he once again quit. I, and I know it's not quite that simple, but that was the outcome. Um, of course, he had reasons slash excuses for that, too. But basically, he folded because he didn't want other people on the tribe to think or on the other tribes to think he was a liar. He said, I'd rather lose my vote at tribal council than make 12 enemies going into the merge. Mm. But first, you got to make it past episode one. To even think <laughs> about the merge, OK, yeah, you know, more than that. 
did he really think everyone would call him a liar for playing a game where he was literally instructed to lie? Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. that 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 whole thing just didn't make any sense either. It doesn't make any sense at all. It, it, well, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, particularly since you then have to go back and talk to your tribe about what happened. And those are Mm -hmm. the individuals that you should be most concerned with at that moment in time, because we all know from watching these past seasons, when you go on those journeys and come back, your story better be good. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they're not going Mm -hmm. to be happy with you. And then you're going to be in a bad spot with the people who are currently in a position to vote you out. So those are the ones mm-hmm. you need to be most concerned with, not what's going to happen down the road, because you got to get there. Like you said, you got to get there first. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he told his tribe everything and they jumped on him like they were Twitter. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, like Kenzie said, all you had to do was lie to strangers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, now. There are people who have defended Jelinski here. Uh, Dalton Ross, in his interview, suggested the card game was a difficult situation. More than that, our friend Adam Klein tweeted that it could make sense to quit the sweat task because it takes all your energy and the upcoming immunity challenge is more important. Okay, Mm -hmm. I'll go with that. Uh, Mm -hmm. Also, he defended him for the card game. So... Like I said, what Adam said about sweat does make sense based on Jelinski's interview or injuries. Mm -hmm. And like what we've heard from Voce and Tiffany, uh, Tiffany Seeley in the past about how difficult that sweat challenge can be. Um, But as Jeff said, it's the way he went about it that caused Mm -hmm. the problem. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the same is true about his other decisions. Even in the card game, if he felt that he was damned if he did, damned if he didn't, he could have simply thrown the game lost without making it obvious that he quit Mm -hmm. and then told his tribe like, ah, darn it. I lost. Tevin was better than I was at convincing her, you know, right. There were better ways to handle all those situations. He seemed to pick the worst path every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Have we seen anybody quit a sweat challenge before? No. Mm -mm. Um, Okay. I I, I can't think of one, but right. Uh, okay. Because this is um, the first time a pure sweat challenge was lost. There was the sweat and right. savvy last time. Right. Um, but this was the first time there was a pure sweat chavy and a sweat. <laughs> I can't even say it. A pure sweat challenge and a pure savvy right. challenge that were lost. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we know that the dream teamers try every mm-hmm. single challenge ahead of time mm-hmm. to know that it can't, can be done. Right. So, um, I don't understand why they didn't try harder to at least try to finish it or see how far they could go. But, um, well, with, I, I, I do think, sorry, I do think a lot of it is because Jelinski slashed up his feet. You know, I mean, he, he, he was he, he said in his interviews, he wasn't wearing shoes. He cut up his feet on the coral. And Mm -hmm. he he said something like he couldn't even wear shoes for a month after that. Yeah, which I'm anyway. But but (laughs) it's like, again, that's not something that happened to him. That is something that he made a bad decision. Right. You wear shoes. Future Survivor players, do me a favor. You have your sneakers, which you don't want to get your Mm -hmm. sneakers wet. Have another pair of shoes that have rubber bottoms, and that's what you yep. wear into the ocean. I don't care yep. what kind of shoes they are. I had like ballerina slipper kind of things with rubber bottoms. They were incredibly comfortable. I threw them away when everything was done because they were so horrific and disgusting. Mm-hmm. But I wore those anytime I went into the water so you don't cut up your feet. Mm-hmm. That's just what you got to do. That's what you got to do. Yeah. yeah, I had boat shoes. Um which I thought would be perfect um, to kind of prevent slipping and stuff. But um, I always kept a wet pair of shoes and a dry pair of shoes. Like Mm -hmm. I had one pair that like I never wanted uh, to get wet. Um, And and that's something that I think people need to consider because I see these people coming in with like flip-flops and Mm -hmm. I'm like, that is not going to benefit you on the island. I, I also think people don't realize how brutal the um, uh, what's underneath the water is 
just going straight out from the shore mm-hmm. because it's really, really tough to walk on and you are going to cut up yes. your feet. We all cut up yes. our feet. Um, but with, so when they went on the journey, I thought when I first watched the, uh, the scene, I thought, wow, that was really smart of Maria to say, you know, to threaten them and say, mm-hmm. I'm going to go back to my tribe and, and you're going to be target number one come merge. What I don't understand is why they didn't turn that around on her and say, well, we're just going to do the same thing to you. We're yeah. going to go back yeah. to our tribe and we're going to make you target number one. Cause that was a really huge risk for her to do. I mean, there's a lot of people that you start threatening them. They don't like threats. Right. And, uh, and they're not going to take too kindly to that behavior. So at first I thought, wow, like that was a really smart move of her. And I don't want to take away that smart move because clearly mm-hmm. it worked, but I'm also like, you know, Jelinski, why didn't you go back at her and say right. to her, like, I- I'm just going to turn it back around on you. Mm-hmm. And when you went back to your tribe, Jelinski, and he's telling them what happened, like, why didn't you just say, like, why did you have to admit that you folded? Why did you have right. to admit that yeah. you were the weakness in the situation? Why didn't you just say it played out the way that it did? And she guessed correctly and you lost your vote. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Adam's defense of him in that case is, well, at some point they're going to find out from the people on the other tribes, which if is a they're risk. still you, there. Right, which is a risk you take yeah. every time on a journey. Mm-hmm. But again, mm-hmm. okay, modify it a little bit. Or, I mean, but yes, let, I mean, you said it perfectly, Lindsay. Come back at her. Or, mm-hmm. like I said, just throw the challenge without admitting you're quitting. You know, just right. don't, mm-hmm. you know, have a little fight in you. And instead mm-hmm. of just like, eh, okay, I mean, we've talked about it the whole time. You know, he get Jessica has said it. He gets a little pressure, and he's like, okay, never mind. Yeah. Um, well, I do love. There was something that he said. I am going to give him credit. He did want a little bit of agency, and I think he looked at it as like, I'm doing both of them a favor by giving them each an extra vote. That may come back to me later on in the game where I need to phone in a favor and Mm -hmm. they're going to be there to help me because I help them. You can still do all that and go back to your tribe and say, right. You know, I lost. Yeah. Maria guessed correct. Yeah. Yeah. Or make something else up that's slightly, you know, different (laughs) or, or whatever. I I mean, you know, but the other thing is, I, I don't know. You know, Giving in to a threat and then saying, well, maybe they'll help me in the future. No, you just caved. Why would they? What they learned about you is that you will cave. Right. Yeah. You know, and Mm -hmm. and therefore in the future, if you're still there, they now know that about you. Mm -hmm. Um, I also expect behavior like that from people that are a little bit hesitant to go on these journeys or get picked because they pulled the short straw or, you know, everyone kind of pressured somebody into going like there was a reason why I wasn't very excited about going on journeys. You know, you've got two different types of players out there. You've got players that will do anything in their power not to go on a journey. And then you've got players that are going to do everything in their power to go on that journey. You need to follow through. If you're going to be so aggressive that you're going to take that journey away from five other players on that island, you better bring your A-game out there. Right. And you better have something to show for it, um, whether that's information or an advantage. Um, and I just felt like we didn't get any of that. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then to add to everything he did, mm-hmm. uh, and, and Jessica, you referenced this earlier, he kept saying things that focused attention back on those situations. Like after the challenge, he's like, <laughs> oh, you can't stop on Survivor. As he again stopped on Survivor by yes. lying down in the shelter and not talking to others because he felt mm-hmm. comfortable. Well, they're all the walking lion. away yeah. to like go and mm-hmm. scheme yeah. and plot. He's napping. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, by the time he was at Tribal Council, it was too late for him anyway. But even there, he said things that were just begging to be pointed out as well. Like, mm-hmm. well, I, I, you know, saying things like he didn't want his effort to be lost and he'll never give up in a challenge. It, Except that Except he, he did, did twice. <laughs> yeah. He meant moving forward, guys. He meant moving forward. Like, yeah. yeah. Again, I'm I won't kidding. do it again. You know, right. um, yeah. That was the last time, yeah. I promise. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure yeah. you would accept that, Jessica, you know, in a trial. If, if a defendant said, I would never commit a crime. Yeah. And you're like, uh, here's yeah. a list of, of four crimes you commit. There, but again, I, I wouldn't do it again. Yeah. If I was allowed uh, you know, to bring them up, I would. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
<laughs> so, uh, all right. Well, we can move to Appendix A, which is about the players keeping their end goals in mind when voting. And we talk about voting out the weak, then the strong, then the weak, then the strong. And before we get to Jelinski here, I want to shout out to the most recently eliminated Australian survivor player as we we're recording this because he proved his Y blank lost credentials by quoting that line in a pregame interview that didn't come out until after he was eliminated. They showed a before and after. Oh, wow. And they, said, oh. and they said before, you know, they showed the before and they said, what will your strategy be? And he's like, I will have this strategy. And he, he snuck in and I will vote out the weak, then the strong, then the weak, then the strong. And yes. Hold on, Jessica, do you see like the twinkle in David's oh, eye and then like the little I dancing did. that he's doing as there he's, look yeah. at him, look at him. I yes. just, I love it so much. It brings me so much joy. I just had to you point know, that out. And there, and there, the amount of times that like, I'll be watching like an uh -huh. episode and there's like, someone says you have to be flexible. I'm like, I know he's sitting on his couch just giggling to himself. Yeah. He's like, mm, yeah. look what I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm, that was me. But this one, I but mean. But you deserve it. You deserve it. No yeah. one else, you know. Anyone can say you have. I know. To be There's no way, you know, mm -hmm. anyone else. But you know you that you still yeah. have that moment. Yeah. yeah. But the, yeah. but oh, that yeah. is a very on point David Bloomberg line. Mm -hmm. So you can definitely get full credit for yeah. that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Now, as far as this appendix goes for Jelinski, uh, there is some question about whether the tribe did the right thing. Uh, because after all, when Kenzie was brought into the conversation, she pushed the physical strength of Jelinski over Jess, saying, you know, she's the weakest. Not to mention, we mm -hmm. saw how sleep deprivation was hitting Jess hard. Mm -hmm. So we might think the tribe made the wrong decision, you know, according to that way of viewing. But we have to remember, there are multiple ways to be weak. And mm -hmm. I think quitting multiple tasks mm -hmm. certainly shows a big type of weakness. I, I know you're going to disagree with me, Lindsay, because you love quitting so much. But... Um, <laughs> But, you know, not to mention the lack of trust they had in him, not mm -hmm. just because yeah. he was telling too much people too much, but also, as Q said to Tiffany, Jelinski has told us he could do everything under the moon. So what is he good at? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that all of that is a really big issue for the tribe moving forward because you don't know where he's going to be coming from. You don't know if what he's going to do, like the journey. He's potentially throwing his own tribe under the bus with people he doesn't even know. So where yeah. do his loyalties lie? What is he actually going to be focused on? Is he going to be fighting for his tribe or is he going to be turning on them? So I do think it's such a question mark and it makes it very difficult for people to play the game with him moving forward. But yes, there is that yeah. issue of her physical state and whether or not that's going to hurt the tribe. But at the same time, it's, it's, long-term game thinking mm -hmm. too like okay if if jess really is physically not doing well well then if they lose again she can be voted out right. not that that's okay however you need to build a strong bond with people to play the game moving forward mm -hmm. and i just i can completely understand their determination here with the just concerns that he brought playing the game with them yeah and i think there's a trust element in there mm -hmm. um I don't mind somebody being bad or even just like not great uh, at the game of Survivor or some of the mm -hmm. challenges that we do. My problem lies in you're telling me you can do well. It's like, um, I I'm not going to name names, but I got really annoyed during one of our challenges where somebody said that they were capable of doing something and they just completely shit the bed with it. And I'm like, then why did you volunteer? Why did you say right. you were good at that? Right. You could have just, you could have just said, I'm not sure how I'm going to do. I'm more than happy to, uh, run that, you know, leg of the race or do whatever, mm -hmm. but don't say you're good at something and then not be good at it. And right. so they I think the difference with Jelinski, they probably threw it intentionally. Go ahead. I, I, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but I, I, yeah, I think, <laughs> don't even get me started. And that's not the purpose, person I was referencing, I, but, oh, okay. um, um, I think they just had more trust in Jess, you know, I, yeah. I think with Zelensky, he was, you know, he's a wild card. And I think with Jess, it's like, they know what they're, 
what they're getting with her. Yes. And while, mm-hmm. okay, she may be struggling right now. I think their hope is that she is going to find her footing. They are going to get their supplies. Mm-hmm. They are going to start having more access to food. They're going to have fire. It's going to be warm. She's going to be able to sleep a little bit better. I don't know why she's sleeping on that bamboo because the bamboo is like the most uncomfortable thing possible, but she seems trustworthy and she seems mm-hmm. like a number and somebody that they can work with. And I don't want to use the word like manipulate into voting the way that they want, but I think because she is, um, a little bit more quiet and, and kind of indecisive, they can have a little bit more control over which way her game goes versus Jelinski. It's like, right. it's a free for all. You never know what you're getting. Right. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think keeping Jess around was the best move for that tribe. Yeah. Between the two of you, you basically read all my notes uh, for the rest of this. You know? <laughs> oh, I mean, start, yeah. No, that's perfect. perfect. You know, because yeah, I mean, yeah. we're all on the same page with this because yeah, mm-hmm. trust has to be the highest priority. And mm-hmm. so, yeah. so, all right. Well, with that, it is about time to wrap things up. So awesome. Lindsay, we'll, we'll start with the nice one of the bunch here. Um, mm-hmm. What are your final thoughts on Jelinski? <clears throat> Um, I I do want to be nice here because again, I know that he's getting it from every angle. Um, I, I think he's got a great personality. I think if him and I were to go have a beer or hang out together, we'd have a great time. I really do think, um, age and experience were not on his side in this game. And I think he just got so caught up in everything, um, that he just wasn't able to fulfill his end of, um, you know, whatever his obligations were, he just, he wasn't able to deliver. And I think essentially that that was kind of his downfall and why he got voted out. Jessica. Excellent. So I know I said (laughs) it at the beginning, but I do think that we just, this is Jelinski's world and we all live in it according to Jelinski, right? Mm -hmm. He said in his interviews pregame that my closest friends would say that David Jelinski thinks he knows everything. He is too smart for his own good. And I think that that is a very good descriptor of the Mm -hmm. Jelinski that we saw because it really showed through in the decisions that he was making. Mm -hmm. He would do things and try to convince himself that this was going to be the best decision until we've already talked about he was backed in the corner and called out on it and then said, oh, yeah, you know what? No, you're right. You're right. Yeah, that's what I did or I didn't do. And so I think that Jelinski's goal in playing Survivor was he wanted to play a Jelinski game without understanding Mm -hmm. that a Jelinski game is not how you play Survivor. You can't come into this game with this idea or this concept of becoming a legend because that's not how legends are created. Mm -hmm. Legends become legends because they are just good at what they're doing and they and they move and manipulate through whatever game they're playing and they figure out how to work within the confines that have been created whereas Jelinski was creating his own confines and then putting them on display and then lying Mm -hmm. about it and then changing his mind and telling people it was something different so you can't have all of those things and then expect to become a great survivor player so I think for Jelinski, he came in with this idea this of what a survivor player is supposed to be and how he was going to break that ceiling and become this legend, but didn't focus on actually how to play the game just at its base level. You mm-hmm. got to hit that base before you become a legend. Mm-hmm. And if you're not at that first base, you're never going to make it to the next step and you're never mm-hmm. going to make it to the third step. And so I really think for Jelinski... It's just unfortunate that he came into the game with this idea that he was going to be a great player without actually understanding just that base game that needed to be played first. So I'm sorry, Jelinski, that it didn't work out for you. The, I, I'm curious to see what happens with the rest of the interviews. I'm very <laughs> yeah. curious. I want to know if, if anything of what he has presented to mm-hmm. us is true. So with that, David... Do your thing. Okay. Well, we know that Jeff Probst uh, was incorrect in telling Jelinski he wouldn't Mm -hmm. win because he's too empathetic, perhaps because he didn't have time to really form bonds that would interfere in his game. Instead, Jelinski's problems seemed to go back to something else he said in the pregame, and that was that he could be arrogant, uh, as you referenced, Jessica. He seemed to believe he could do anything, but then when faced with the reality of the situation, he crumbled. Worse than that, 
he had problems accepting what had actually happened. As we discussed, it wasn't necessarily the quitting of the tasks that was the killer issue for him. Mm -hmm. It was the way he handled it afterwards. His cut up feet gave him a good reason to quit the sweat task, but he didn't use that properly. He could have found a way to throw the journey card game or reframe what happened when he told his tribe, but he didn't do that. He acknowledged that he had problems being deceptive, but that is a huge part of this game. Jelinski's tribe simply couldn't count on him. Even Banu, who was clearly mm -hmm. very fond of him, told us that Jelinski gives up too quickly. Jelinski said that as long as he was in the game, he'd give 100%. Unfortunately for him, <laughs> his tribe couldn't accept that because actions spoke louder than words. Mm -hmm. And he didn't even use the opportunities he had to frame his words in a way that would be less detrimental to him. And that is why Jelinski lost. There we are. I All forgot right. about the that feeding was good. him, too. Yes. Yeah. Well, the, the feeding Why him, was Banu feeding well, him? A number of people of similar backgrounds to Banu have said that in Indian culture, that is fairly typical for an adult and a child. And that shows just how close he oh felt. Oh, my gosh. So I hmm. also think that he was trying to shut him up a little bit. I, I think it's a combination <laughs> of things. <laughs> at, the moment, yeah, yeah. at the moment, Jelinski yeah, was sure like, is. am I safe? And Bonner's like, yes, you are. Eat this. You know? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yes, a number of people have come out and mm -hmm. said, yes, that is a part of, of the culture. Interesting. So it's not yeah. That is, that is so. very, very fascinating. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. Yes. Yeah. I was like, what is happening right now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, before we get to our finale predictions, uh, finale, not finale. finale. Our, yeah. yeah. You could tell I didn't update my notes from uh, <laughs> the last uh, version of this to our yeah. to our episode two predictions. Uh, let me remind everyone that the rules we just discussed are available in poster form mm -hmm. and, of course, T-shirt form and as a checklist. And yes. so, uh, you know, go to uh, Rob has website dot com slash Y X lost feed and you can. Uh, you know, there's, there's that, uh, again, and, uh, you can order from any of those links. So, uh, you know, have fun there. All right. Um, I, I want to say for predict, well, before we get to predictions, mm -hmm. let's also tell people where everyone can find us so that those don't get buried at the end. Oh, okay. So oh. I am at Jessica Lewis 89 on Twitter and I am now back into the Twitterverse. I've been a little bit silent, uh, but now that Survivor's back, I guess I'm back too. So you can certainly follow me there. I'm also on Instagram at Jessica Lewis 6789. Lindsay, I know that you were on Twitter. We don't have your handle on the screen. I know. I, I didn't think to put it on. So I'm oh, at right. Lindsay at Lindsay Carmine underscore. Um, you can find me. I, I'm not very active on Twitter unless a uh, season is airing or I'm talking about uh, like gun reform, but, um, but yeah, I, I'm always stalking. I'm always, I'm always uh, secretly reading. Um, I, I love y'all's tweets. I love David. He knows I always like his stuff um, mm -hmm. when I'm on it. Uh, so a big fan, a big fan. Um, you can mostly like, usually if you want to just chit chat with me, come find me on, uh, Instagram, which is usually where I'm at. Um, and that's at Lindsay F Carmine, um, all lowercase. So. And, yeah. uh, yes, I am of course all over the place. Uh, yes, there, you, <laughs> yes know, you are. Um, you can find my various accounts through my link tree at mm -hmm. linktree slash David Bloomberg with a dot before the EE. Uh, there is that page um and uh, that's a dot before the e in the url for linktree uh or you can find me on most text-based social media like twitter and blue sky as at david bloomberg mm -hmm. and on video platforms tiktok youtube and instagram as at david bloomberg tv mm -hmm. and because threads is connected to instagram i'm at david bloomberg tv there as well most of my survivor discussion and certainly all of my live tweeting is on twitter trying to get some discussion of various reality mm -hmm. shows on threads in blue sky it's just difficult uh yeah. mm. you got you know if they build it they if you build it they will come mm -hmm. well they built it people haven't come yet so <laughs> <laughs> um you know as far as the video sites uh tiktok youtube and instagram i'm posting mm -hmm. 
two or three uh, videos per day. Uh, mostly I'm posting, you know, right now from U.S. Survivor, from Traders U.S., from Australian Survivor, even a couple from Deal or No Deal Island. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, you can get everything uh, there on those video sites. Um, also, speaking of other shows, I am still recapping the Traders U.S. on the Tradar podcast. Uh, and so you can uh, find that where you normally get your podcasts or uh, on YouTube at, you know, the Tradar or the Tradar pod. Uh, so you can find me in all those places. Now, though, it's time for predictions. Mm. And so right off the bat. It will be of little surprise. I'm worried about Jess. Me uh, too. Yes. Uh, Yanu has lost both challenges already. And if she doesn't sleep, she is not going to be any help yeah. in puzzles. Yeah. More importantly for her, as Rob pointed out on both the Post Show podcast and Know It Alls, it wasn't that like she was saved because people were like, no, Jess is my tight ally. We must keep her. Mm -hmm. It was like, no, we really want to get rid of Jelinski. Yes. We want to get yes. Rid of Jess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I, she's not going to have any defenders if, if no. they lose again. And that's what uh, I'm saying. Really I well. maybe disagree with you guys. Okay. Oh, and, I love this. Yeah. Uh, I know everyone looks at Jess as the weak link, but I kind of feel like she's going to slide in there uh, in Jelinski's spot for uh, the foursome in that tribe. And I, if, if, if Yanu goes to tribal council again, I might put my money on Banu. I don't know. And I mean, it. it the one clip that leads me to, the one preview mm -hmm. clip that leads me to possibly believe that is him yelling in yes. the challenge, getting mm -hmm. so mad at Jess, as mm. a matter of fact. Yeah. Um, if he does that, I mean, we've already seen, we know he idolizes Jeff Probst. Yeah. yeah. I just posted, just before we started recording, I posted mm -hmm. a TikTok of him mouthing the words to the fire represents life. Yes, I saw County. that too, yeah. Um, but he also did things like there was a there was a confessional where he was like, as Jeff says, you have to dig deep, you know, mm -hmm. and we just know he idolizes. Jeff. If he starts doing that around camp. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. going to be mm -hmm. like, get him out of here. And uh, I think he is doing that. We're just not seeing it yet. Yeah, uh, he was on my list of people where I thought, look, I, I think all these people are lovely people. I know yeah. if we were to all hang out, I would absolutely adore them. Mm -hmm. Um I just think when you're in an environment like Survivor and you're sleep deprived and you're hungry, like the last thing you need is just somebody getting on your nerves. And, yeah. and you know, when we talk about vote out the weak and then the strong and then the weak and then the strong, um, I kind of look at Jelinski as weak. I didn't, I didn't look at him as a strong player. Right. So right. I, I don't know. There's something telling me that I, that it's not just going home next week. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now I want to hit the other two tribes just in case mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Um, if Nami loses, it sure mm -hmm. seems like Randon has been set up to be the one voted out. You know, yes, yeah. Liz drew some attention very early by talking about her businesses, but mm -hmm. that seems like something Tevin might use against her later if he wants, if it even comes up at yeah. all again. Mm -hmm. um, for right now, Randon has already annoyed Soda mm -hmm. and Venus by telling Soda his thoughts about Venus, which mm -hmm. he immediately passed along. Um, he's also commented to us that he's worried about Tevin. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I feel like he's going to say something else to the wrong person. And if they lose, I think Randon is gone. And I don't know, you probably noticed too, like a lot of the scenes when they would show them, he was always kind of like off, like... Mm -hmm watching but not being involved in what was mm -hmm. going on so he certainly isn't meshing as well as many of the others are in that crew yeah um and then finally we have the sega tribe now in the pregame i was mm -hmm. worried about ben but i i think we've seen him being apparently yeah. well liked they love him yes they love him <laughs> They love and, him. And I do too. I, I thought he was going to be yeah. a little annoying and he's not, he's so yeah. endearing and fun and he's right. bringing the vibes, but he's also not in the majority Alliance. So right. they yeah. love him. But, um, 
However, there's one other person who's not in the majority alliance and who keeps talking about not being in the majority mm-hmm. alliance and worrying about those women. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, th- those women, they get together. Uh, I think Tim is the one who's in trouble. Yeah. Um, you know, Charlie mm-hmm. was in the middle, even though he, of course, was the Charlie and Charlie's Angels. Um, mm-hmm. But with Maria getting the extra vote, there really isn't a middle anymore. The women don't need him. Mm-hmm. And Tim right. even identified that. So Charlie would be smart to at least go with the women at that point. He yeah. knows that there's they already have the vote. So, of course, you go. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think Tim is left on the outs there. Yeah. Yeah. Especially. Was- go ahead, Jess. I was I was very I was very curious about Tim pregame, like how he was going mm-hmm. to end up like just fitting in with everything because mm-hmm. he has such an mm-hmm. interesting personality and there's something very in- intriguing about him. Yeah. And I just wasn't sure how that was all going to fit with everyone and how he was going to jive. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that a lot of points that you made are are very interesting just to see where that is going to uh fall for Tim because he's not he's not approaching the game like Charlie or like Ben, he's he's approaching it from a more, in the women's eyes, threatening position, right? Where like Charlie and Ben might be more like go along, whereas Tim isn't necessarily going to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think Charlie is, you know, if he's going to be in this women's alliance, he's going to make sure Ben's not going home. And mm-hmm. and yeah. if Ben's smart, he's going to keep Charlie as close to him as possible. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I definitely think uh, if Sega goes to tribal, it's going to be Tim going home, yeah. which is a shame because I I really do think Tim has a has some potential. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But but not with his attitude. Right. <laughs> that he's showing in the first uh, couple of episodes. I mean, the first couple of days. Um, he's also showing that he doesn't know a lot about the game when he makes just random comments like it's always you know, the women getting the men out. Yeah. Like, yeah. Have you been, have you been watching? Yeah. Like, I mean, like, the thing is, there yeah, are people who believe that. Out. There are a lot of people who believe that. And mm-hmm. like a, a famous poker player who loves Survivor has talked about wanting to be on Survivor, except it never hit the schedule, never meshes with his right. poker schedule. Uh, posted recently and said on reality shows, always remember the women will get together more easily than the men. Um, they more naturally bond than the men do, and they will vote out the men. And I was going to respond and say, dude, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> right. yeah. Um, but I just decided I've, I've had debates with him about other things before. And he is so popular that either one, my response gets lost in everybody else or two, he just doesn't acknowledge when he's wrong. I didn't yeah. even bother with it, but, yeah. uh, but yeah, a lot of people still believe Watch out for the women's alliance. It's dangerous. Yeah, right, it's gonna get right. you. And yes, there are some women's alliances mm-hmm. who did that. Rule one on our poster has the most famous one, mm-hmm. but it doesn't happen all the time. As a matter of fact, there is probably four times as much. And yes, I just pulled that out of the air. But four times <laughs> as much fear of a women's alliance as there yeah. actually is right, women's alliance right. activity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but with all this in mind, I'm still, and even considering what you said, Lindsay, I'm still going to revert back to my initial thought. I, I don't see Yanu suddenly pulling it together. I, I, I don't know exactly how they'll fill two hours if it's a straightforward just vote, but I'm sure they'll figure mm-hmm. out something. Maybe they'll use Banu as the red herring. Right. Um, I, I do think. Unfortunately for this podcast, Jessica will follow David out the door. <laughs> okay. Do we want to put a little wager on it? Like a little friendly bet? I, what? I don't know what we bet, you know. Uh, okay. If I I, am I don't want to get in trouble for making a bet across state lines here. That's anymore. okay. That's okay. If I am correct and Jess does not go home next week, you have to send me a Y blank loss t-shirt. A rules of survivor t-shirt. Oh. <laughs> and if I am wrong and Jess does go home next week, then you get to pick what I have to do. Ah. Well, it's not yeah. just Jess or nothing. It's Jess or Banu. Okay. Yeah. And so is <laughs> so does that mean that the bet is just off if Banu or Jess doesn't go home? Yeah, like if what another, if Yanu? Yeah. If okay. another tribe, yeah. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So what happens if I lose the bet? 
Oh, I thought you said we get to determine it. I don't know. Uh, well, I, I'm not... I, are we not determining it now? Or are we waiting until we'll like to... after? Yeah. After we'll... you... <laughs> it's like when they make a trade for a player to be named later, you know, it's a. Uh... Maybe yeah, she has to send you one of the Jeff t-shirts. <laughs> there you would, go. would you wear one of these? I don't would know. You wear... maybe. I don't know. People would get confused if I was wearing that. Cause I, you know, uh, 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 so often, uh, you know, I can't wait to see where he goes with this. I, I, I so often uh, <laughs> talk about the things that Jeff doesn't necessarily do right. Uh, okay. But, I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Fair um, enough. All right. Then how about this? I find um, a fantastic survivor themed shirt that I just think you'll enjoy because I feel like, you know, after all these years of us, you know, yeah. talking and stuff, I feel like I know you by now. I feel like we're friends. Um, so I'll send you a shirt. Is that a deal? All right. <laughs> All, All right. right. I like it. Thanks for helping us out there, Jess. <laughs> That's All amazing. Right. I love this. Well, now I feel bad because now Jessica's not getting anything, oh, but I'll no, send no, you some fun. I, listen, in she my will get head, joy out I'm imagining him wearing the t-shirt that you have, and that's making me giggle. So I think yeah. you should still send him that t-shirt. <laughs> okay, well, if I send it, then he has to wear it on a yeah. podcast. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's no point in me sending it if you're not right. going to wear it. Right. This is what uh, I'm saying. So yeah. I love this. Okay. I love, I love that, Jess. Okay. This. All right. Okay, let's do that. All right, fair. Deal. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, as we wrap up, <laughs> our, uh, our bet, there's not a bet under any – you know, federal law. No, a no, non bet uh, bet. A little discussion. Right. We call it a friendly wager yes. uh, yeah. around here. Yeah. Agreement. Okay. It's a friendly Good. agreement. Uh, Love it. Uh, <laughs> I want to encourage people to check out the RAP patron program at robhaswebsite.com slash patron. You can get yes. access to all the special podcasts that are put out just for patrons, including a new one this season uh, that Rob recently announced. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, you get the Facebook groups, Discord, yes. the whole community. And you get early access to tickets like the Chicago event this season. Woo! Um, so, which was almost, I mean, the, the tickets to the actual event were almost sold out. There were still mm -hmm. some tickets left for non-patrons, not even every patron that wanted to get into the after party, got into the after party. Mm -hmm. So you got to be a patron and be quick. So, yeah. uh, so again, uh, you could support shows like ours and everything on the network at Rob slash patron. Uh, also, make sure you're subscribed to all of the reality TV rehap up podcasts by going to robhaswebsite.com slash rehap ups feed, selecting your podcast service of choice. Uh, you'll not only find content like us, the B&B, &B, uh, Sh uh, Shannon Gus's Survivor International, mm -hmm. but also, of course, podcasts on a number of other TV shows covering just a wide variety. So just get that whole feed and you'll get everything. That's what I do. So. And there we can are. Can I do thank yous? Yes. Excellent. So I'd like to thank Scott St. Pierre for all of the editing that he does, not only for the Why Blank Loss podcast, but all of the content that you do see on RHAP and all of the help that he has provided. Mm -hmm. There is a wealth of individuals who make this all possible. Rob has put together an incredible mix of material and podcasts and just everything you can imagine. It's an incredible group. They work so hard. So thank you so much for everything that they put out and all the content that they do create. Thank you, Lindsay, for joining us today. It's always Thanks great to have me. you on. It's so yeah. fun. We love chatting with you and you always have great insights. So thank you for that. Thank you for the possibility that David Bloomberg will be wearing that t-shirt because that makes me smile. <laughs> so I'm really so happy that you're here today. And thank you to thank all the you. listeners for coming back again and yes. being part of this process with us. David, you're fantastic as always. And I should point thank this you. way because it's backwards. Yeah. But yeah, so thank <laughs> you for everything that we do each week and for tolerating my difficult schedule. So yeah. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> yes. I want to also add thank you, Je uh, Lindsay, uh, mm -hmm. for helping us start off the season with a bang mm -hmm. and for not quitting when the podcast got <laughs> Um, no, and and same thing to you guys. I mean, you know, as these seasons, uh, you know, grow and, and we're at 46 while I was on 43, like the fact that you guys just continuously bring me on and, and let me have uh, a platform to talk and, and to give back to a community that has just given so much to me over the years. Mm -hmm. I've been a patron for years and years and it, it genuinely is one of the greatest communities that I've ever been a part of. Mm. And I'm, I'm so grateful to, to have a voice and for you guys to want to keep having me back. So thank you. I appreciate it. 
Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And uh, of course, thank you, Jessica, for another mm -hmm. great episode. Uh, you know, we will see everyone in a week. We are uh, working on potentially another guest next week. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll we'll announce that. Well, whenever we announce it. Um, <laughs> and until then, you know, you can find all of us elsewhere. We went mm -hmm. over that. Uh, and so you, you want to share your thoughts, then let us know. Uh, till then. Bye. Bye. Bye.